You're listening to the Michael Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator, advocate, and educator. Every week, he sits down with fellow cultivators, mushroom educators, scientists, and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Michael Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Michael Geeky, and tonight we got a good show. Should be a little spicy, just like we like our mushrooms. Am I right? Okay. I am. Uh, before we get into it all, uh, we got us some cool announcements uh, tonight. Um, I'm gonna save the coolest for last, but uh, I got some more. You know, got some more late to the game uh, packages. Uh, my buddy, I want to shout out uh, out back mycology. Uh, he's on Instagram. He's on Discord. All the way from Australia. Got me a little little, little letter here. Little Christmas card. Let's see what he what did he send? Happy holidays, much love, um, Christmas cheers. What do we got? We got Nanook. All right, I think I heard. I think there was a post this week. Dave was talking about nobody grows Nanook. So guess what? We're gonna do it. I'm a grow Nanook. Here we go. There it is. Microscopy use only. That's all I'm gonna do. Uh, what else do we got? AMVP. Okay. And uh, okay, I'm not gonna actually pull that one up for reasons I won't get into let's let's show off some slaps here there we go let me catch that light out back mycology and then here's the logo this if you're on discord this is how you know uh out back right here his little koala bear with mushrooms love it all right thank you very much homie he's uh he's a moderator in, in my discord he's awesome he is single-handedly taking care of all the uh, Australian growers that uh, come into our community and want to start growing mushrooms. So uh, he, he's, he's a big deal in Australia, in my opinion, and uh, he, he's a big deal in my Discord. Very helpful guy. So thank you. Uh, next up, I got a little care package from Natural State Mycology. This dude, I'm, I so owe Natural State some genetics, it's not even funny. But uh, we got a little, we got the little card here. And then what do we got in here? Let's see. It says, uh, the world awaits. Hope you don't already have deep end. The other two are my work. Okay, what do we got? Yeah, we got some deep end. All right. And then we got some crosses here. I, I don't know if he wants me talking about them or not, so I'm not going to say anything. Okay, and then we got some slaps, of course. We got, let's get that one just right. Natural state. Look at that. Look where we came. We've come so far, guys. Actually, have we? I don't know. If we used to be mushrooms, maybe I want to go back and be mushrooms rather than that. Look at that corporate guy. I don't know. We'll see. I still love the logo, dude. Um, and then here's a cup. This is his other one. This is the one he's rocking as his avatar right now. I kind of like this one. Uh, don't you guys? I feel like that might need to be a T-shirt. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Natural State. Appreciate it. Um, and then... Now, of course, all the um, shop uh, Spotify listeners aren't going to know what I'm showing, but that's okay. That's why you guys got to go watch the video. Um, and then I got this from, uh, she addressed it, Fatty Cakes. <laughs> you guys know the nursery rhyme. I won't, I won't repeat it here. Um, but on uh, Discord, she goes by Crystal. And uh, this is not only handwritten. Um, she's given Michael Mamas a run for, for their money. This is handwritten. May the spirit of Christmas fill your heart and home with peace, love, and joy. Signed, Crystal. But, okay, so check this out. You guys see that? That is not a print. Homegirl literally painted this by hand as if that wasn't enough. Then she had to get hook me up. She heard me talking about Amanita. She had to hook it up, some Amanita. And then I got a little, little, little bookmark as well. So original art from Crystal. Uh, deeply appreciate that. That's going in my little special uh, gifts pile, display case, whatever you want to call it. Look at that. Even the finishing touch on the back, little little uh, spore print on there. I love it. 
All right, and then somebody else sent me, uh, I gotta like make a little public announcement here. Um, somebody sent me some gummies. They work, I like them. Uh, brain power. I don't know who you, I mean, I'm sure I talked to you at some point in time and casually said, yeah, send me some gummies. I can't remember who it was. So anyway, if it was you, just DM me so I can formally say thank you. I'd really appreciate that. And then my buddy K Metro on, uh, on, on my Discord server, he got me a little power bank. I'm just going to show this off. It ain't, uh, you know, it's not going to power a car. But it's cool. You know, solar powered. When Geeky's out foraging uh, the spring and summer uh, at, you know, various locales ar around the globe. I can use that if I get in between a rock and a hard place, literally and figuratively. So anyway, uh, really appreciate the love, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Just wanted to formally shout you guys out. Appreciate you. Uh, so now, the time uh, we have all been waiting for. We have announced this one maybe a bit too early, but that's okay. We all the ducks are now in a row. They're quacking on command, and we are ready to do yes, the mutant grow along. We're gonna do it, guys. So how about I pull up uh, the the man of the hour, the one who we are sourcing all these genetics from? He hands down is the most consistently very impressive mutant grower I have ever come across in the last couple years. He is absolutely in love with growing mutants. I would put him up against anybody. I have seen other people grow great. I'm not saying no one else can grow like this guy, but I'm saying this guy, this is the guy I go to when I want to talk about mutants. I'm talking about Mutation Man. Mickey, what's up, man? Hi. Not much. How you doing? Good, man. All right, let me pull up your, uh, let me pull up your little overlay here. Okay, there we go. Um, so for those people listening tonight who didn't know, uh, you were on the show. We talked about mutations of Psilocybe cubensis mushrooms and the weird, wacky, crazy things they can do. And if anybody has grown a tub with a little bacteria in it, they know it's not hard to get these mushrooms to mutate. It is harder to get them to consistently and stably mutate. And that's where some of these cool cultigens come in like Enigma, Omni, yeah. Numa, Tattoo, et cetera. Et cetera, by the way, guys, is not an actual uh, cultigen. Mm -hmm. Don't be, don't be like tomorrow. Hey, uh, in Wombat Labs. Hey, have you guys heard of et cetera? I'm looking for the mutation. Yeah, 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 it doesn't exist. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, after that show, uh, a lot of people, dude, I'm telling you, a lot of people message me like, I want to grow mutations. I want to grow mutations. And I was talking to my buddy P-Funk and uh, I was asking him like, man, what, I think it's time for another grow along. We did Iceberg. It worked out well. Had a lot of people do it. Super fun. Let's do another one. And he was like, ah, dude, I mean, I think you got to do a mutant grow along. I mean, people were loving the, the, the Mickey episode. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so dumb. Yes, of course, that is what we got to do next. So I messaged you, we're doing it. Here we are, here we are. We are doing it. So, doing it. Fine. so what are what are we doing? We doing plates, we doing LC? We're doing, no, we're doing LC. I got okay. packs made up. I got, got four syringes in each one. LC. Love it, okay, ready to go. It might be cold, so I tried to insulate them a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Smart. And then we're gonna do. Here's we're gonna do a tattoo. Here's some test plates. I don't know where to hold them the best, but is it too? That's can okay. We it? can see it. Yeah. Okay. So that's can tattoo. Not There's to be tattoo. confused with tat. And then we got Numa here. We got some Numa. Sweet. Awesome. Love it. So Enigma. Oh yes. The the ever enigmatic Enigma. Yeah, and you want to squeeze on the side of the plunger when to get single drops like this, in case if somebody doesn't know that. But wait, say that. Let's hear this pro tip, Mick. Let's well, you want to. Well, you want to take your plunger and you want to plunge it a little bit out, or like on a paper towel or whatever you got below yep. your rack or whatever. So you plunge a little bit out, and then that'll get it out to the needle. 
and then you squeeze towards the tip of the needle just one drop. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to go everywhere. Okay, so practice makes just, perfect, guys. You might want to go get yourself a practice that. syringe. Yes, if you have yeah. not done this. I, I'm, I think a lot of, my guess is there's not too many people going out of the gate. I've never grown. I'm going to start with the mutants. I'm hoping most everybody's grown. I'm hoping they all know that, but I didn't know if I knew the the one drop trick. I usually, I do do that gotcha. like little pre-squirt. Right. I don't know why I do that, why that feels right, but I do the yeah. pre-squirt and then yeah. I do my, my last little splash squirt. And I actually don't mind getting it all over the plate. Yeah. I think yeah. I like to make a mess. So But if you want to run the plates, but if you want to run the plates, you're running, you want a little one little drop and one. That's true. Single. That's true. Right. I like it. Yeah. All right. So you get you got them packed up, ready to go. You're ready to yep. take orders. Um he yes, is sir. on Facebook. He is on yep. Discord. If you are on Correct. either one of those, there's nothing stopping you from getting on them. If that's a problem, you can reach out to me through uh, Instagram and I can get you a way to get a hold of him. Um, but anyway, so so yeah, yeah. We're, we're doing that. So just to be super clear, we are charging, right? You will be charging money for the Omni, the Numa, and the Tattoo. The Enigma is being gifted for free. Correct. In the spirit of the Mutant Grow Along. Just yep. so everybody in the community understands, we are going to touch on this topic a little bit later. Um, but just want everybody to know Enigma's being given away for free, as it should be. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, reach out uh, to Mick if you're interested in participating. I think I know about 50 people right now who are have been dying to take uh, to, to place an order. So my guess is you're going to be busy for the next few days. Hey, I'm ready. Um, you're, I'm you're ready though. Hanging out at the old post office. Yes. Hanging out at the, at least it's not Christmas time anymore. There, there you go. Way better. Oh yes, Christmas was rough. Um, yeah. So now then the plan, just so everybody knows, is if you're not on Discord, I highly recommend you get on Discord if you're going to do the scroll along, because we're going to be. I got a, a mutation grow along channel in my Discord. That's where people are going to be asking questions. Mickey can answer the questions. Some of us who have yep. grown the stuff can answer some questions. It's where as things start to fruit, as as you start getting mutations to start growing, if you have questions, if you want to post pics, progress, all that stuff, I mean, it sure. sort of becomes a little competition, and it's fun, right? You get to see who, who, who gets some fins first, get to see who's getting some big little fatty, you know, yeah. heads of cauliflower some going. Some people grow in tubs, some in bags. Yes. It'll be it'll be interesting. So my recommendation is if you're not on Discord and you want to do this, get on Discord. Go to it's just it's the little Discord tag backslash or forward slash Michael Geeky. Join the Discord. It'll be listed in the description below. You can uh, just get signed up. And then uh, in my server, uh, Mickey goes by the name Mutation Man. You will easily Correct. be able to find him because he will be hanging out in the uh, Mutant Grow Along channel. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's let's do this. Let's do a little uh, sneak peek for for some people who yeah. maybe don't know what all this stuff looks like. Mutant Madness Grow Along. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Some graphics here, courtesy of uh, our buddy P Funk. All right, so we're gonna start. I got tattoo. Uh, all right. So Mick, you're intimately familiar with all these. They, yes. you know, just like cubes, right? They're, they got just caps, like they got cubes. stems. These, these <laughs> don't have caps and stems. Why don't you they, give me some like characteristics of each as I'm going through tattoo, Omni, Numa, subtle little differences that you admire about each. Cultigen. I love tattoo when it has all the blobs formations on them or brain formations, whatever oh, like they the, call these, them. The white yeah. ones along the periphery. Yeah. That's yeah, kind of what I like. Pretty much all that tattoo is all brain formation. It yep. looks like. Mm -hmm. And then even the, the bluish stuff, it's like squiggly or brains. That just means it's ready, getting ready to harvest or. But. Okay. All right. So there's tattoo guys. Omni. You got the little coral fan fins. Yeah, it's yep. a huge, 
it just gets massive. It's just a big one. <laughs> that, that <laughs> it just is keeps massive. going and going. Yep. All right. And then Numa. Numa is really wild. Numa looks like a little crazier. It is. If you zoom in on them, it's got some really weird looking formations. I, uh, okay. It's one of my favorites. Okay. And then here's what you get for free. Enigma. Yep. Oh, by the way, we should say that this Omni, this is the mutation of Omni. Omni mutation. Yes. Correct. Yes. yes. It so only this, mutate, it, only mutates. It doesn't have yeah. fruits and yeah. mutations like one of them yeah. does. No. Okay, and then Enigma for free. All right, Mutant Grow Along. That's it. That's what we're doing. Just so you guys know. All right, so if you want to participate, if you've never grown uh, any mutations before, this would be a great time to give it a try. You're going to have the assistance not only of Mickey, of myself, but of literally maybe about 100 other people who are going to grow along with you, who are going to learn with you. There are other people in my Discord who have grown any and all of these. They will also be there uh, in anticipation of this. Every day someone is posting a picture, oh, here's my tattoo today, or Here, here's my Omni mutation today. So there are other people that will be able to help you along. Don't be intimidated. If you think you want to do it, go for it. Let's let's do it. Let's have a big old grow along. It's going to be super fun. We're all going to learn. If you haven't ticked that box, we're going to tick that box. Uh, should be a good time. If you can grow regular cubes, you can grow mutations. It just takes more patience. That's all. That might that might limit a few people. I know. <laughs> I know a couple guys. We're going to have to work. That's going to be the. We're going to need a sub thread just on how to be patient. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Hey. Uh, yeah. Get ready Thanks for, for having me. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Get ready for your DMs to blow up. Uh, we're going to do this. So then the, the way these go is once, uh, you know, once he sort of has shipped out everything, I, I think he, he can do maybe close to 150 of these or 120 of these. Um, once we feel like we've gotten our orders in, then I, I will set a date of when everybody should maybe knock their bags up by. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some some people won't wait. Some people just knock those bags up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That's okay. There's not a lot. Patience isn't easy. It's that easy. That's okay. If you guys just can't wait, that's fine. Some people do the opposite. I had somebody in the mutant or in the iceberg grow along. I mean, it was basically done. And then like a month later, like this is months after we started it. Somebody was like, hey, am I too late? Did you guys already do this? And I'm like, where the hell have you been, man? Yes, this is like long, long gone. But he's, he still did it. So it's all good. Anyway. All right, man. Thank you so much. Hey, and uh, it's yep. going to be fun. Yep. All right. Take care, man. All right, guys. So as we were getting this together, um, I was talking to uh, somebody in the Genetic House Facebook group. And they were talking about, hey, man, I hear you doing, you know, uh, mute, mute and Grow Along. There is this guy in our server that just isolated uh, a mutation of Lucid Gates. You might want to talk to him. It's kind of cool. And it's stable. So I reached out. First off, it was great because he's a cool guy. It's been great talking to him. Um, and he was like, yeah, you know, it just it just happened. Uh, it's, it's a stable uh, Lucid Gates mutation. So I said, you know what? I mean, I kind of got the ball rolling with Mickey here. But let's just add you on as like a, in case there's people that want it all. Or maybe some people go, well, I've grown a few of those in the Mickey pack, but I have not grown this one. So, like, if you feel like you've done a lot of the, the stuff that we're doing in the Grow Along, but you want something a little different, you still want to get in on, on the action, this, this would also be your opportunity. If you're like some of these people that got to have everything, here's your chance. You, you can have one of the newest mutations that I know of, um, and that's from my buddy Steph and Kai. Let me pull him on the show here. All right, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up? All right. Drip G Genix. Drip yeah, Genix. Am I saying it right? Yeah, it's a new logo. So. I like it. The logo is fresh. It's so fresh, I had to like make it even bigger than the little space for it just because I want to, make <laughs> sure to, want to make sure to show it off a little bit. I like that guy. He looks like he's definitely getting into some good stuff. Um, all right. So why don't you tell us just a quick story about how this uh, this mutation came about? 
what you had to do to, you know, make sure it was stable and all that, maybe how many people have worked it, and then what you love about it. Um, so first of all, shout out James Cruz. Uh, I really like Lucid Gates. I've probably grown like 300 tubs of Lucid Gates before nice. uh, Mutant Gates popped up. And then uh, one day I noticed it was going slower than the other tubs. And I noticed some reverted pins coming up and some fins. And I don't know, immediately I was telling everyone, I think I got a mutation. I think I got a mutation. And um it went a lot slower than the Lucid Gate stuff. It took like 45 days and I took a whole bunch of clones from it. They all seemed stable, but I got um, two or three clones floating around that are really cool. And I got like uh, dichotomous keys growing in it. And nice. My buddy Mike and yeah, it's nothing that I did either. I, I have no idea how to like persuade a mutant to, I, I can tell you, you that just I- just wait, yeah. Right. Sometimes I will throw a bacterial grain bag, though. You know what I mean? So yeah, sure. Not yeah. sure if that's what happened, but. Yeah, you just never know. I mean, right. uh, again, now the other thing that I've noticed, I, I think I've said this before, um, a lot of the guys on Instagram that are consistently popping up monster fruit, they're growing a lot of fruit. Uh, a little right. bit of it is a numbers game. There's not, in my opinion, there's not a secret thing they're doing that's, you know, making them get more gigantic fruit. If I'm running five tubs every two months and you're running 400 tubs every two months, you just got a greater likelihood of getting something interesting. You got more likelihood of hitting a leukistic, albino, mutated, reverted. You're just, you're just right, playing right. that game more. Yeah. So that's cool, though. That, that you got this um i i will have to do a post tomorrow because i don't have any photos of this you sent it to me um hold on let me see if i can find it here i sent quick. you a ton of photos <laughs> sent it to me yeah way back in the day and then i get now i gotta scroll through all the hold on let me see if i can find it here real quick real quick won't take me too long oh yeah i got it okay hold on let me grab the one i like the most here this one's pretty cool all right we're gonna do this one all right mutation lg on the fly let me grab this here gotta convert it <laughs> production live guys we're, we're producing all this stuff on the fly here we That's go. partly my fault too, because you asked me for the photos, and then I'll still like just talk to you afterwards and send you a bunch of messages. <laughs> I mean, let's just go. Let's go with blame it on my ADD. Let's do that. All right, hold on. I got it. Share screen. Or no, I don't want to share screen. I want to. Here we go. So you guys don't realize this is really just me building anticipation for this <laughs> here we go all right here we go i got a picture so i'll tell you what i like about it is the coral fans have like these little fingers on them yeah which is, which I, is kind of cool i mean it, it's it's a little distinct i and i went through a, i remember when i first was looking at these i'm like it's probably closest in my opinion to enigma but it's also not exactly like if you had a tub of this and a tub of Enigma, Enigma next to each other, you would know it was not Enigma. You you would be able to tell. Right. I like the the biggest like difference I can see is uh, Lucid Gates has this like I don't know like a really like light blue tint to it. Mm -hmm. like oh yeah. In the right. caps, and that's exactly what this blob has is that. that same color. Nice. Yes. Yeah cool man all right guys so i wanted to pull stefan on just to be like here and here's another you know if you you get your cake and then you want the cherry on top here you go you grab uh so you're calling it mutant gates yeah mutant okay gates. i like it cool all right so you guys and then uh drip genics is that uh instagram handle yeah it's uh pretty bare bones but you can still contact me on there all right cool uh, stefan kai on facebook and 
I'm doing 60 millimeter plates. You're doing plates. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Cool, man. And, uh, All right. Yeah. So yeah. people, if you're interested in that, DM him. He, he can talk price with you. Um, and yeah, let's do this. We're going to get the ball rolling right now, starting tonight. When the show's done, I'm going to make sure the description's updated with all the links for these guys so you can get a hold of them and uh, they can they can get the Gen X out to you guys. So, all right. Thanks again, Stefan. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Yep, see you. All right, guys. So we're doing it. Mutant Grow Along. Here we come. It's going to be fun. There's going to be... We're getting Enigma out. We're getting Numa out. Mickey's favorite. We're getting Omni Mutation out, which might be my favorite. We're getting Tattoo out. I think that's like Raymond Medici's favorite, if I'm not mistaken. So we're we're getting all these out. It's going to be fun. We're going to grow some mutants. Um, Dichotomous Keys, I guess, is growing the this new uh, Mutant Gates. We'll have to see how that looks. Of course, it's going to look great because that's what he does. Um, all right, so what we got up next? We got the man of the hour. You guys like my uh you guys like my thumbnail this week? You guys like that? I had had a little fun with it. I kept I kept thinking, what, what are we gonna call this episode? Mono carry on? Like like we can't no one's gonna no one's gonna be watching this on uh you know a search and go, yeah, I wanna watch mono carry on. So I'm like, Mono King, let's do that. We had the swab gods, now we got the mono king. So, man of the hour himself, let's bring him on. I'm talking about the one, the only, Dr. Edward Grand, PhD. What's up, dude? <laughs> How's it going, man? It's what I call all my doctor friends, dude. I actually do. I actually do. I had one laugh. He was like, you know, you're the only nurse that calls me dude, right? I'm like, okay, doctor, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I feel really uncomfortable when people, I'm like, why do you know I'm a doctor? How do you, like, why do you know that? What do you know? About, what else do you know about me? <laughs> when people well, are like, oh, I saw your video. I'm like, uh, oh, like, why did you see, why are you watching my videos? Like, <laughs> just don't be this guy. I was on an airplane once. They, they got, came over the intercom. Is there a doctor on the airplane? And uh, a guy raised his hand he had a phd in something he wasn't a doctor oh I was like, I know. bro did you seriously think they just wanted to know if there were any phd <laughs> academics on the airplane somebody oh, wants you to edit their man the manuscript or something oh my like, what was so this funny. guy thinking man Oh, yeah, it's weird in other countries, you know, people use it differently also. Like it they got different educational systems and it confuses the hell out of a lot of people. They're just letters. Most other countries are gonna assume doctor means a physician, you know, not, right. not just a PhD or whatever. So it, it confuses yes. the hell out of people. Yeah, like the same typical doctor things, like I got this thing growing on my skin. Can you help me? Right. <laughs> I can no. I can talk about it. I can do some yeah. research, but I can't fix you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. So most doctors that I interact with and work with, they refer to themselves as physicians, I think specifically because of this issue. Yeah. Like they're just trying to get away from doctor. It's yeah, well, technically you can be a physician as well as a doctor. Like, So you sure. don't need to be a, a doctor to be a physician and like, I guess, right. vice versa. Yes. So like what the guy used to work for, he had all different, I, I don't know, they have different, even doctors, they've got different kinds of physician doctors yeah. and all that stuff. It's like MDs hit the DOs, DOs don't want to talk Something about like that, that they're DOs. Yep. All that good stuff. Yeah. This dude had like 20 different little abbreviations after his name. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> Dude, uh, the docs, they're not that bad, though. The nurses, the, like, high-end nurses that get, like, 15, 20 degrees and certifications. And I'm sitting mm -hmm. back going, man, I think once you're at, like, nine letters after your name, you should probably just have gone and been a doctor. Like, you put a lot of work into being a nurse. I mean, okay, we need good nurses, but I tell you what we, I don't personally believe we need a million PhD nurses. We just need people taking actually better uh, care of people. And I don't think it takes that many. Yeah. Well, I met a guy the other day who had three, three master's degrees. So I was like, mm. never talk about uh, your ADHD or what is your ADHD? Yes. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's you're, you're running out of life when you're doing like yeah. three masters. <laughs> yeah. To pick one. That's 
<laughs> that's when you're well, like you two. climb the stairs and then instead of taking the next step you actually jump over just laterally to another staircase you just keep or even jumping lower laterally. down on the other stair yeah, you know with the people that get several bachelor's degrees i'm like i, I actually me, contemplated dude. it too but but I was like, uh, wow, it's getting kind of expensive, you know, paying off these loans and stuff. And it's like, maybe I should just focus on this or don't do education yeah. anymore. Yeah, man. I'm but in the same boat. I was going to go back to get the same up. boat. I'm like, I'm over it, but I don't know what to do. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah, you start running out of years, you know, after you a do. while. <laughs> yes. And steam. You run out of steam and years. Something. Um. All yeah. right. So. So here's here's what's up. I, I thought it would be cool, uh, based on some some of the week's events. I thought it'd be cool to talk about how way back when we first were gabbing at the end of all the shows, and uh, one week, I think you had a, a ghetto dilution video, mm. and you and I are just talking about it, and I, I'm you know I'm like I, I'm I'm gearing up to do my serial dilutions. You said oh, I just did this video. Uh, on you know just like a one-step dilution watch that video let's do that and i said i like this we should we should start talking about this on the show so we did and uh and some people liked it and they tried it i mean a lot of people liked it a lot of people even said to me i'm gonna try it. i'm gonna try it for every person or i'd say for every 20 people that said i love it i'm excited i'm gonna try it i think maybe one person did Mm -hmm. and because it's work and it's something different and it's scary to try something new i don't know whatever yeah. the reason but we we got Funny. some who did and they figured it out and they're doing the work i like it so yeah it's uh, funny how set in the way you know you think in our community we're kind of like you know people are like eccentric or eccentric or whatever and they're on the edge but like people are really really set in their ways like I'm just I've I've explained there's a couple guys I've explained the diaper tech thing to them like five times like a year ago and that video I made has been out for like a year at least and they still are like I might give that a try it's like what are you waiting for I'll tell you what they're waiting for Ed what? they're afraid to buy diapers at Walgreens yeah maybe that's it <laughs> that's what they're they're, yeah I ordered mine on Amazon because I'm not going to go to a store and buy diapers. I'm just not going to. Yeah, the, the pharmacy here is quite fun. I'll, I go there and I'll buy like four boxes of swabs and like six like big like packages of the diapers. And they're just looking at me and like a bottle of vitamin C and like some yeah. syringes. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, and a big what? vat of Vaseline. And they're like, what is this guy doing? Yeah. yeah. Oh no! I got a really big fat of that. I don't need any. You're like I buy. I buy that. I buy industrial grade petroleum jelly. Yeah, well, you know, probably the most suspicious thing is the syringe or the needles. You know, that's that's you can buy them in the store here, but that's for me. It's still a little bit like yeah, I get them online. Yeah, but needles freak people know. out. Man, I ha so I had a gal come into work. Uh, she worked at I think it was Cracker Barrel, and someone had given themselves their insulin injection. And then oh. wrapped the needle in a napkin and she grabbed the napkin and stabbed oh, herself. So we had to like do a little, little prophylactic crap on her. And I was like, man, I wish I could find that guy. She's like, yeah, oh, man, if I if I could find that guy, I'm like, that is that's like criminal charges, man. You cannot yeah, leave a freaking yeah, needle exactly. wrapped in a napkin on a table. Dear that's God. That's crazy. Why would you ever do that? That's an that's horribly irresponsible. Lazy yeah not thinking not consider it they probably ate so many of them i don't even know what's at cracker barrel because that place sucks but they probably just ate too much crackers at cracker barrel and they were <laughs> probably going into dka and they weren't even thinking straight and yeah they had to go home and she got stabbed anyway yeah. wow that has nothing to do with mushrooms um yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah we're so so yeah so I, I i wanted to have you back on because of some recent events and I thought it would be cool to bring on some people. There's a handful of guys that I know got really excited about breeding and crossing. And so mm. uh, I asked these guys if they wanted to come on and powwow and just uh, maybe paint a picture, right? It's easy for you, Ed Grand, PhD, mycologist. He's done all this stuff. He knows what he's doing. You know, he had to argue with 
Ron all day, his <laughs> thesis advisor, who's a jerk, but the, an amazing mycologist. And, and, you know, so you got these little tricks up your sleeve that help you out and, um, the rest of us didn't. So I thought it'd be cool to hear people who watched your videos or heard us talk on, on, on the show and see like what the breeding life has been like for them. So let me pull some mm. of these guys on here. So I'm going to, many, gonna many pull... hours staring through a microscope, you guys, that's the, I mean, Lily, we're not talking them thousands and thousands and thousands of hours and plates and yeah. Oh, before I forget, the, we don't forget the, the grab and drag. I've got a tat grab and drag, a transki TTB BVI, and a starfish, and they're all yeah. popping off. And I got to get on a plane tomorrow at three o'clock. Oh. So I'm going to have a fun day of trying to isolate monos. We got to make sure everybody knows how to do the grab and drag. Yeah, it's so we dead easy. Yes. It's so easy to make monos. And before the people who are like, saying like oh you know the the price is blah 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 do it yourself watch yep, my videos yeah yep. we're gonna talk Dude. all about that we're yeah, what i it. what i'm hoping with this video is i hope it'll give clarity to people who i, I hope it encourages people that want to do this to do it and for those mm. that want a better idea of what it entails to maybe make different mm. decisions so yeah that's that's what we're gonna do so for, let me do this let me pull these guys on one at a time. Just get get them to tell their brief story of how they got into isolating monocarions, how it's been going. I'm going to go through. It's just a few guys. We're going to go through them, and then we're going to bring everybody on. We're going to chit chat for a little bit. Cool. And then and then we're going to um, say bye to everybody, and then get get back to some of the the week's recent events here. All right. So I'm going to pull you off, and I'm going to pull these guys on one by one few minutes each and then we'll pull everybody back on okay all right all right so first up i'm gonna so i just hung out uh with with the next guest today we were we were right back there looking through microscopes for a couple hours uh i'm talking about my uh not next door neighbor but we we live pretty close to each other all things considered uh jeff karras of the fungus frequency what's up dude what's up man hey how you doing good um not much not much we uh we got a little work done today played with the scopes it was a good time um how about you do this just Definitely. walk us through real, real quick um you know whether how you got finally motivated to get a scope wanting to you know do some breeding whether it's ghetto crosses serial dilutions to isolate monos or whatever just kind of walk me through where you got your information and how that process has been so far. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, honestly, like I, I kind of started messing around with like the the double swab ghetto uh, ghetto crossing or whatever um, early on, just you know, uh, just to see what happened, just uh, out of sheer curiosity. Um, had some luck, had not some luck, you know. Early on, some of it just didn't really know what I was doing anyway, but. Uh, you know, as I honed in with that a little bit at the same time was when, um, you know, uh, coming across Ed, actually a lot of his stuff, you know, through you and everything and uh, um, the, the grab and drag and just a lot of the different techniques and his explanations of stuff that just really made things a lot easier than, you know, a lot of the different jargon, different things you find online where, you know, everyone's got something to say about everything and, you know, everyone's got their own ways and that's great too, but it's also great to have someone who can actually teach it and show it in a way where it's understandable. And for me that, you know, it just, it made it, it made it seem doable for someone who wasn't, you know, a PhD, which is especially coming from someone who does have that kind of background, you know, to be able to come across that way and relate to just everyday normal people who are just starting to, you know, more experienced people at the same time. I, to me, it was, it was just great to, you know, come across that. Man, it's funny you say that in that way, because uh, a while back when I was trying to get into nursing school, I had to take a couple classes uh, and it was going to like throw my whole schedule off. So I had to test out of a chemistry. I had to test out of organic chemistry. And so in order to do that, I started watching. I had to also test out of my other chemistry because I took it more than five years. It had to be within five years. And I took chemistry at U of M, but I didn't take it within a lot of time. So I had to test out of like the basic first chemistry and then organic chemistry. 
And in order to do that, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I started primarily with um, Khan Academy. And I, and I went down that rabbit hole. I really like Khan Academy. It helped me get a 4.0 in nursing school. I killed nursing school 100%, all because of being able to rapidly learn online. And I watched a video one time. This was when I was like doing a cardiac segment during nursing school and they had this guy on. And then after they had him on talking about like cardiac output and stuff like that, um, he, the, the Sal Khan guy who runs Khan Academy, he said, you know, when we do these videos now, we find the highest level person we possibly can because we found that it isn't until they get to this very high level of understanding that they can then simplify things and make it like easier to explain. So sometimes like when you first learn something, you think you understand it. So you're trying to explain it and you're sort of like not explaining it well. And then you get yourself back into a corner and all that stuff. Um, so I think just Ed is really crystal clear about stuff because he knows what is actually complicated and what's not. He knows how to explain. I mean, he's been a professor for a long time, so he knows how to explain things. And yeah, I mean, he's taught me so much. I, I could not agree more. So you have now been Absolutely. doing, you still do, you still do the double or the ghetto swab. It's because you yeah, got it there, yeah. you do it. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, you know, sometimes when you got two real nice fruits and you just have them harvested at the same time, it's like, why not? I don't know, to me, it just, why not? Yeah, see what why happens. Why freaking not, yes. But yeah, at the same time, I, I have started doing more of the, the mon die crosses and some mon mons, uh, yep. you know, doing them that way. and. Just playing with it you know seeing what happens and uh watching the different ways they react well it's working well however you do it whether you're doing the double whether you're doing the the mon mon or the daimon they're all three different ways to get to the same thing which is screwing around with these genetics and seeing what we get so all right thank you so much dude i'm gonna i'm gonna pull a couple more guys on then we'll pull everybody back in in a minute cool sounds good all right. All right. So next up, uh, he was on not too long ago. Uh, he knows how to grow fruit. I'm not, I really don't, you know, I might want to call him like the male Michael mamas or the Michael mamas are like the female dichotomous keys. I don't know what it is, but anyway, these two are just slamming it out of the park lately. And I love talking to these guys. So anyway, here's dichotomous keys. What's up, dude. What's up? All right, where's your overlay, man? Oh, here we go. All right. Do I have an overlay? Keys, you need a logo, bro. We got to get you a logo. Yeah, I'm working on that. I, yeah, that's a long story. I'm trying. How about like a mushroom and then the stipe is a key? Well, I, I got a whole idea. It's not a big thing, but I it's stuck in my head. And then I got a guy that's trying to work on it. He's already mm -hmm. been paid and it's just not. Damn, Keys. So... Always, from what I'm hearing, you're always paying people before they're delivering. You got to start getting them to deliver. I have and a then long, these guys. foolish history of that. I keep, every time I tell myself, why do you? I don't know. <laughs> Man, dude. Oh, I trust shysters. this guy, though. This place yeah. is full of shysters, I'm telling you. <laughs> don't people give seem them to the like money. money. I, that's the strangest they do. thing. They love it. Yeah. All right, man. So, uh, so let's do the same thing with you. So, how did you come to decide you were going to start trying to breed things? Well, I, it's so, you know, I started growing, whatever. Um, honestly, the first set of plates I ever stroked off, I had already grown, tried to grow and had a little bit of success with the bag, whatever the multi spores, syringes into bags, but I had bought my flow hood, learned how to pour agar, did all that. Uh, made my first plates, ran my first plates with the first four swabs I bought. And one of them just didn't go off. And I put them aside. I didn't want to throw them away. But anyway, so about a, maybe a month and a half or something later, I looked at them because I was looking at them all the time. I was new to it. I look at everything every hour still. <laughs> so I looked and one of them had a spot going off. By that point, obviously I had bought a hood and all the stuff. I had been, I was watching your podcast. I was, I'm a little OCD, ADHD, whatever, all that combined. So I was watching all the information I could possibly absorb off YouTube and, and all that. I had found Ed through your show. So I had been watching his information. I, I don't remember if he had rolled out the grab and drag yet. I don't think he had. I'd seen, I know I had seen serial dilution. I, I, so I understood 
than a monocarion with a single spore, right? I mean, I had that concept in my head. I understood what it took and the process. And I'm looking at that plate thinking, nothing's going off in a month and a half. And now there's one little tiny thing going off. That could be one spore. So I mean, I isolated it to another plate as I had heard to do to make sure if something else went off, that it wouldn't dicaryotize. And, and I let it sit there because what the hell am I going to do with it? I didn't know about diamond crosses yet or any of that. <clears throat> So as far as I knew, you had to have another mono to breed it with. So I started paying more attention to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that was when, you know, so yeah, I really started looking at what Ed was saying and all that. And at some point, I think in that time, maybe he had already done it and I just noticed it then. But for whatever, I, I saw the grab and drag technique described. And I just thought, well, there's no way it's that easy. You, you must have to do a hundred of those to actually get one of them. You know, I don't know. But maybe. And so I thought about it more and more. I think I got this thing on a damn plate. Maybe I know how to get another one. I guess I'm going to buy a damn microscope. So that's what I did. I, went, I did the research and I started looking because I mean, I knew it's like, well, even if you got the monos, you got to know their monos. And, you know, I just didn't, I didn't see a way around getting a microscope. I really, I still don't. I don't know how you do that. So I, I did some research. I went to eBay, bought a microscope. Um, yeah, and and verified the one I had was a mono as best as I could. I had to get Ed to help me. I this was pretty early in our friendship, but yeah, I, I just asked him a question on Messenger. Hey man, how did how, how did you get the damn slide prep on these things? Because that was this one of the many struggles I had. I don't want to make it sound too easy. I don't want to drag it out too long. And I know you got other people to get to. Um, but it took a lot for me to be able to verify that first mono and feel like okay, maybe. <clears throat> and, and then, yeah, I got another one with the drag, and I was like, well, okay. So I crossed them, and yeah, it worked, long story short. Um, and that led to where I am now. And I was like, well, I'm going to do more. <laughs> and yep. here we are. And the more you do, the easier it gets. But it ain't easy in the beginning. It's like, right. it's like anything, any learned skill, talent you might acquire, playing the guitar, I've heard you use that. Yep. Um it's all easy once you know how or ride a bicycle or whatever, but it, you, you might get some scabs and, you know, on the way yep. and it's not easiest, you know, I don't know. Yeah, man, I was just talking to Jeff today and I said, it's like uh, in the trades, if you watch, uh, like if you work on a framing crew and you got the guy that's been doing it for 10 years or 20 years, these guys can, these guys came from before pneumatic nail guns. So yeah. like they can actually, you would not believe the skill and precision these guys can grab a nail, grab that sucker, pop it down, bop, and then whop, and it's yep. in. Maybe yep. one extra little tap at the end. Yeah. And and I said like, you could watch a YouTube video on how to do that, but that's you're not gonna learn that way. Some shit you just gotta keep doing it over and over again. Yeah. With some good ideas in your head, definitely helps. But some things you just gotta right, like getting a feel for moving the the um the stage on the microscope. Yeah. Getting a feel figuring for out the yeah all what that condenser takes, the aperture yeah, or whatever that thing. Time. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. So so that's cool. I uh, appreciate that. Okay, let me. We're gonna run through two more people and then pull all everybody right. on. Okay. All right. All right. So next up. All right, this guy. I man. So for me. He was the first one that messaged me and said, hey, man, I watched you and Ed talk about it, and I just went and freaking did it. And, uh, hey, you, you know, it seems like it's working out. So um, definitely admire this guy. He uh, he goes for it. He is his own person. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, you should definitely check him out. He's a great guy. I'm talking about Gideon White Cloud. What's up, man? Oh, we got no audio. How about now? Oh, we got audio. There we go. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool, man. So, uh, yeah, same thing just like with everybody else. Why don't you just walk us through, like, the birth of you deciding to do this? What what really triggered it? Why did you decide you want to go down the secondary rabbit hole in mycology here? <laughs> and then how, how's it gone since you got going? Um, I think I, I first learned when... Uh, home mycology was putting out youtube videos and that was like my first successful grow 
I think I grew KSS and then I got uh, fruit flies really, really bad. Ooh. And my girl made me throw everything out. <clears throat> yeah. And then so, you know, a few years later, I, um, I was in a motorcycle accident. Um, I broke 16 bones, so I was kind of couldn't really walk. And I was, you know, scrolling through YouTube and was checking out some, you know, I always like to watch some mushroom videos. And I seen the Michael Geeky podcast, the Dirty South and Michael Geeky. And I saw that and I was like, man, I was like, that's what I want to do. I was like, this guy is so cool. Love it. Love and he it. said, um, or he said, yeah, it's not hard. Anybody can do it. So and he, he said he used, did smash plates. And I was like, but he didn't describe how he did it or what it was. I was like, what the fuck is a smash plate? And then so I kept watching your videos and then, you know, came across the Ed videos and the Ghetto Dilutions. And I decided if I was going to do it, I didn't want to get fruit flies again. I wanted to do it the right way. So I just watched every single Ed video, did everything he said, got the dilutions. Nice. You know, got the first thing thinking you need a microscope. I said, people are doing ghetto swabs without a microscope. I don't need a microscope to verify monocarry on it. Yeah. But nice, man. Yeah, I think I got like four microscopes now. <laughs> Uh, well, you got me beat. I got three. I only put one in in the back of my shot here, but yeah, I got I got another little amp scope and I got got a little modic. You you get you get to where you keep. I don't know if you get a good price on them, you want to just keep getting them. For some, I don't know. I have a problem. That's the well, truth. like like Dick, Dick Adamus said, um, getting the slides right was the hardest part for me too. You know, trying the tape slides or you know little piece of agar and smashing it and, yep. or taking the whole plate and putting it under the scope so i ended up getting a, a microscope camera and that was the best way for me as far as fatiguing yeah i mean it's it, it can get real yeah i take a lot of frequent breaks if you're especially me i wear glasses it's it's frustrating so yeah i definitely like having the camera but i still go sometimes when i you know is that a clamp okay i'm, I'm gonna go over to the the actual eyepiece and and verify it 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 is definitely better look through that but the camera's definitely the pro move never if you can afford to get one with a camera go for it um that's great i mean okay so so you did it you just right you you got the scope you started confirming them you, you got monos i know uh when uh natural state sent me a little pack of monos uh he was like well gideon sent me some so let me send you some of gideon's and uh I, I still got a tap black cap uh, mono. I can't get it to mate with anything I put it into, um, but it still looks like a mono to me. So I just, I don't know if it's just being temperamental or what, but we're we're going to get it to mate with something one of these days. Anyway, well, all right. I'll, I'll send you one. I, I, I think I still have that one too, so. Cool, man. All right, dude, let, let me get through one more person, then we'll bring everybody back on. For sure. All right. All right, next up is the homie natural state he he might be a runner up with casey here for being on uh uh i th think three or four times at this point let's see okay what's up dude hey what's up everybody how's How it going doing, good all right natural state notice i updated your overlay you did i dig I it got, i got it. i got the little hat sitting up there a little bit more I like yeah. it, man. I, I like it. I like it too. Fresh. I'm proud of myself. I'm just gonna take a moment and, and admire <laughs> just that. Admire it. Yeah. Yes. My my four year old was watching some weird, ridiculous YouTube channel where it's like three dachshunds and and the people like make up stories about the dachshunds anyway. And then they had <laughs> some bad guy, and the bad guy was wearing that mask. So my kid was here as I was working on this, and he's like. Oh, oh, look. I know him. He's a bad guy. He's from my show. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, <laughs> That's is. great. Kids shows are weird, man. Like if you, if you ever just like sometimes sit down and actually like partake in some of those shows, yeah. they're, some of them are very strange. Bro. It's... When I was a kid, it was like the letter people and, and Mr. Rogers. And at some point in time, yes, we said, true. we said, let's just have the people who can't get a job. <laughs> who do like five different drugs a day let's let them write the scripts for our kids cartoons yeah because they're getting weird as yeah yeah they anyway. are they are i agree 
funny sometimes, but weird. <laughs> I mean, dude, every time you get on Netflix, it's a new, uh, the new one. I started Carol in the end of the world. I watched that for three seconds and I'm like, yeah, man, you guys are making a lot of cartoons these days. Just yeah. not a lot of good ones. Yeah, that they are. It's like when fucking Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner is better than this. It's yeah, bad. no, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right, so so let's hear your story real quick. We'll pull everybody on. Sure. Um, how how did yeah. you get going into the, into breeding? Yeah, so really the thing that piqued my interest was really similar to Gideon's, and I think we share kind of a a, a commonality in that 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 sort of sort of made us you know, become, become buddies a bit, uh, and, and that we both, uh, really enjoyed the dirty South episode. Um, I really connected with dirty South. I, I was, uh, I, through a friend who knew him kind of locally, um, and, and ended up, you know, we became pretty close for a while. We chatted daily for a long time. Nice. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that was what kind of piqued my interest was hearing him talk about it and kind of seeing, you know, some of his projects, that was when I had just gotten into it. And, um, yeah, I, I just very quickly decided that's, that's what I want to do. I just knew right away. That's, that's what I want to do. I, I don't really want to mess with any other Avenue. That's it. Um, and so, yeah, I just, uh, I, I started absorbing as much information as I could both through, you know, your podcast, um, Ed, and then um, I, I had a, a, another good friend named Lamegiton Labs who, who also gave me a lot of really solid, solid, solid advice. So, I mean, you know, there's there's so many avenues out there. And, and I, I always recommend Ed to people um, whenever anybody asks. Ed and Dichotomous both have have some excellent, you know, videos on, uh, you know, on different techniques. And, um, you know, it, it really isn't super complex process to get a mono carry on it's the it's the time that you have to spend babying it and you know <laughs> you'll second guess yourself a hundred times you know before you actually get to fruiting your first cross from that mono and and knowing okay <laughs> so, right. you know yeah uh, and even then, you still kind of second guess yourself yeah, sometimes. Man, I do anyway. When you're looking at that plate, and you're like, "Okay, I got it. I'm I'm feeling confident." It's like dating a super hot chick that you think's out of your league. You're just sitting there going, "Like, how long is this going to last?" Yeah, it's going to yeah. dicaryatize at some point in time yeah. here. And, yeah, and exactly. If it doesn't, great. That's good. You just keep working it. Cool, man. I, All I, right. I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. Let, yeah. Let's pull everybody on and chit chat. All right. All right, here we go. Brady yeah. Bunch again. We did it. We got the Brady Bunch. The Brady All right, guys. Bunch. So, um, I mean, some people, right, started double swabbing. Some people, uh, you know, watch what we were chit-chatting about, Ed, and started to go for it. But overall, I, I would say everybody who gives your videos a chance will message me and go, wow, those are freaking great videos. Like, just simple easy to understand um i remember one time you you had one where you like dropped some part of the microscope i can't remember what it was oh, and some camera mount yeah oh yeah the camera that mount. phone mount yeah and somebody messaged me and uh was like i mean are you sure he knows what he's doing he dropped the something something mount. and i go oh you don't drop things you're an, you're a dropless human being like dude why do you that's like the best part about that video man is that he dropped something come on yeah i was not edited to definitely. death <laughs> yeah, yeah i've never it. edited it. i can't spend time yeah. editing i'm sorry i have better things to do than edit youtube videos it's rough man that's, that's the hard part of trying to make a video yeah if you're yeah, yeah. I, I kind of also have the school of like if you don't do it like in a one, I don't know these people where you can see they just chopped it up and you'll see like 30 seconds and all the video chops. And it's like, if you can't really do it right the first time, you're probably running off a script that right. it seems so unreal. Like it's not, it's not like, I don't know. I kind of feel that like if you can't do it just in a one off, maybe you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> sure or i mean dude come on there, there's two different kinds of videos but i would say that right now youtube is inundated with all these polished videos so i yeah. think people really appreciate a little more rawness to the video yes, yeah for sure i i do i do also yeah i really um 
Yeah, I don't really want to feel like I'm watching a big news channel kind of thing, you know. It's it, it's been right. it's it kind of takes something away from it. But a lot of people, I think, that start YouTube, that's what they focus on. Yeah. And uh, mine was just out of sheer laziness. And I'm not going to spend <laughs> like for a 10 minute video, I'm not going to spend eight hours editing it. I'd rather make eight right. hours more videos. Right. Now, the other smart yeah. thing about doing the videos <laughs> is if people start asking you a bunch of questions and it's a 20 minute conversation, you can have that 20 minute conversation a hundred times in a year, or you can make a video Punk and, the you link. Have, and you <laughs> just send, right? Just send the link. Mm. Just, oh, that's a great question. I get that question a lot. Click this yeah. link, watch it. That yeah. was the main reason. Yeah, That was the main yeah, reason. After really you get the cool. same question, maybe 10 times, you're like, wow, I could have asked, I could have answered this question very easily by sending a link. Exactly. I need to make a little computer folder full of links that I can just. Oh, let me go over here. Here. Well, I, also, I mean, I don't mind answering the questions, but it is a lot easier if you just have a link to somebody's video or whatever. Yeah. You say, "Hey, let me." Here's how you can see it being done. And once yeah. you get a once you get a bunch of videos, then you can you can actually make playlists. So, like, Ed could have a shirtless playlist. <laughs> these are all the videos I did shirtless. And then these are all the videos I did in the two. lab. These are all the, right? You could, no, I'm teasing you. But those are you, my only fans. You can't, yeah. you pay extra for those. Yes. There's a lot to be said for the miracle of YouTube or whatever, though. I can tell you for oh, myself yeah. personally, I'm a visual learner. So when I found YouTube as opposed to the previous endeavor and cultivation efforts on shroomery, trying to put somebody's text into my mind and then produce a product from that that didn't work out so well right. and seeing people doing things and, and being able to watch them and you know it's like okay there's what he's saying and here's what he's doing and okay now i get it right you know, and that's so, where I what ed's YouTube. saying like having it one take <laughs> yeah. is better because it's okay to show it is, like yeah. oh sometimes you drop things or oh fuck, i just touched the swab <laughs> to the grill I right, bet a like, lot of that is people deleting content because they're embarrassed. That's my sure, concern. Sure. When I'm yeah. making a video, I'm like, ah, and I have deleted some because I'm like, ah, son of a bitch. I, I should, that's why you're going to see me make a mistake and I'm going to get called out. Now I just call myself out if I'm making one. I'm like, yeah. well, it, it's a I, good I dropped teaching. that. That was clumsy or whatever, you know, whatever. Life happens. I, you know, it's a good teaching moment it. for yeah. people watching. Yes. Yeah. 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 It is exactly. That's how I learned a lot of my people shouldn't be so self-deprecating. You guys, this is something we we all I think need to get over because I was like a nerd in high school too. There's way too much self-deprecation. Dichotomous, you're an awesome mycologist, but like every other sentence you say, like how you fuck up or do something wrong. We have to stop that, you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but it's it's like it, it's not. I hear a lot of people doing this. Like we need to be more confident. Um, sure. If you, everybody has their faults and makes errors, but I don't know why there's this perception that if you make a YouTube video, it has to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. I, I'm not really yeah. sure where. Maybe it's because of social media and these polished IG posts and shit now. Like. People like you can't make mistakes anymore, really. Like that's I mean, that's my human. concern. It's not that I'm worried about what I'm doing. It's that I'm worried about people's reaction on social media and they able to get you know so... shouted out. Oh, this is dummy. He doesn't know what he's doing or whatever. It's crazy. It's silly to worry. Ed, 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 Ed and I were just talking about that. There is a point where you just get too exhausted by worrying about yes. all that stuff, and that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, I still be... have. Yeah, I, I get that it's still I'm there. I'm getting over it. But yeah, it's it's secondary. Yeah. 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 It takes time yes. for me, but I'm getting over it. You'll get it. Unless you have three. And that, the other thing is that I'm sure it's coming, but it hasn't really happened yet. All that worrying has pretty much been for nothing to this point. Yes. No, I mean, yes. I've had a few realize... issues with a few little people, but nobody's destroyed my life or whatever. So, yeah. Man, I remember I was like <laughs> 19 and I had some guy talking smack on the internet to me. And I was like, bro, how about this? Well, where are you at? And he's like, oh, I'm in, I forget where he was, like Inkster, Michigan or something like that. And I was like, cool, man. Here, I'm going to give you an address. And uh, <laughs> you let me know when you're there and I'll show up and then we can have this talk face to face. Let's see how this talk goes face to face. <laughs> I gave him the address. 
lo and behold, he messages <laughs> me going, I'm, I'm about to leave. Um, I will be there in 15 minutes. So I'm like, okay, this guy's probably punking me, but man, I hope he's not. Cause I'm ready. When I was young, man, I was a cocky little motherfucker. I was ready to go. So I met up with this guy. He was little. He still, he talked smack a little bit, but it was a totally different conversation. And I was like, do you see why like profiling and fronting and act and posturing and puffing up your chest on the internet don't mean anything yeah like it's not it doesn't matter no. none of these people are going to come knocking on your door dichotomous keys you ain't got to worry about it no Look, ed's even, over in thailand so he's got about. nothing to worry about so <laughs> ain't, and nobody's going over there to you know <laughs> no. punch you in the face i you don't think it's that serious anyway i mean i don't <laughs> yeah. mean to imply that exactly but Anyway, so I think this is great. We got a growing body of people, and there's a bunch of people that didn't want to come on the show who are also doing work. Um, I got quite a few people killing it in, in the microscopy channel on my Discord, people doing breeding projects all the time. Uh, it's really great to see you guys doing this work. I was just talking to Jeff today, and I was like, man, when you really start to understand, oh, we were talking about how you know, these nuclei, they're just kind of hanging out by each other reproducing but they're never actually you know fusing until they get in the basidia and then i i was i was saying i was like in every single basidia they're going through sexual reproduction and creating four half offspring that then can later mate and and make you know a, a, a something that'll fruit and i said so like if you do the math on just a single gill <laughs> how, how, how many insane. basidia yeah. are on a single gill how many mm -hmm. options there are. I was like, to sit back and go, no, I got this. I got this Michael community. Let me breathe. I'll, I'll create the genetic for you. I mean, cool. Do that. Be the wizard of us. <laughs> that is fine. If that is your steez, roll with it. I'm not mad at you, but it is not the most evolved thought. <laughs> the evolved thought is there's too many genetics. We're missing everything because not enough people yeah. are doing this. Not enough people are putting in this mm -hmm. work. Yep. You yeah. gotta get yeah. more people. Oh, I isolated a mono. Cool. Not everybody's got the free time to isolate a mono and that's fine too, but they might have the time to stab a mono into a grow bag. They might have the time to, you know, Oh, natural mm -hmm. state. Oh, damn. I, I bought a couple genetics from you and he gave me a free mono plate. Wow. That's cool. Oh, wow. I like this. This is fun. So this is, this is like 2024 the message I'm, I'm talking about wanted to have you guys on early in the year to just sh like let you guys represent anybody that's interested in getting into this there are episodes to watch here there's content on edge channel to watch there's um other people who are also doing this you know we're we're not the only ones um but just go for it there it, you you're not gonna figure out how to do it if you don't try to do it so so Get going. Go for it. One of the other things that helped me when I was starting was when I was worried about, oh, well, I don't it's no, 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 all this reason I can't do it and that reason, whatever, was I finally, whatever, thought to myself or whatever, what's going to happen if it doesn't work? And there were really no repercussions. I mean, what's going to happen if I fail? <laughs> and make it, oh, my God. Like, well, and nothing. I got a dicarion, probably is what happened. Yeah, and that dude, I could prove. Yeah. I want to so, be I want to be in your head, Dichotomous Keys. I'm like, man, I don't know if I ever worried about that. But yes. Yeah, none's going to happen. I'll worry about everything. That's just so. like with the double swab. What's going to happen if it doesn't cross? Yeah, Fruit's going to happen. Yeah. One of the fruits is going to happen. You're still Terrible. getting mushrooms. You're still getting mushrooms. It's all Well, good. it's PTSD from all those people attacking you before. Like, oh, how are you going to yes. verify that? Yes. And then it's <laughs> yeah. like, you get, it's seriously, I think yeah. we all have PTSD from yeah. the past 20 years of people like, oh, how do you know it's a cross? Like, and it's like, immediately you're going to get attacked. And it's like, well, uh, 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 oh, maybe I won't do it. It's like yeah, a dog that's, that's been intent. kicked so many times, you know, you're just like, oh, he'll just like sit in the corner and whine because yeah. we've been kicked so many times by these fucking assholes. That... Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I'm sure we've all been kicked plenty of times. You get used yeah, to it after a while. So instead mean, of whining in the corner, you start attacking people. You, or you just keep doing your thing. I mean, that's just like, 
right? If if you're I, I so when I lived in LA, I went to see a lot of stand up at the comedy store, the improv. I live with a couple stand up comics and I watch people bomb. And uh number one way to bomb as a comic is you got one heckler and you actually listen to him. And then you yeah. engage with them and somehow some way what they say gets under your skin and it derails your your vibe. It derails mm -hmm. your confidence and then you just feel like all your material sucks and these are people i watched like the night before crush mm. absolutely kill in a room and then the next night the same material because they listen for one second to one heckler couldn't couldn't do it the confidence is everything and i wonder what the mentality of the heckler is like what why why do you sit somewhere where these, everybody's having fun and think what do you mean i'm gonna be the guy who destroys this they're the original trolls <laughs> they're the trolls yeah. of comedy yeah. yeah they're just that's their that's their deal because it yeah. is on the internet it's easy to go that looks like shit, or you didn't do what you said you did or that doesn't work that's so easy to do yeah Mm -hmm. so. Start a podcast, but, but do a cross, <laughs> I mean, put it out there. That's not easy to do. No. Right? Doing all the work, vending a menu. That's, Jeff knows. Yeah. Vending a I menu that's only not imagine two this. things <laughs> is work. Dude, I was yeah. up this morning at like 5.50. Jeff had already messaged me this morning, 5.50 a.m. I'm taking all my kids to school. He's already up. I already know what he's doing. Right? It's work. None of the... Only easy if you're a culture vulture. <laughs> Only easy if you don't make, you know, you don't give people refunds when you send them shit. Right. If you do the actual work, it's all work. All work is work. Yep, that's for sure. And yeah. nobody, gets, nobody gets paid off a trick. No one's got a magic trick job yeah. except magicians. And most wow. of these people in here are shitty magicians. So everybody figures their jokes, <laughs> their their little magic. I can make money disappear. Time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm starting to believe you on that one, Keith. We're we're gonna we're gonna have to um have a powwow on some of that. Anyway, all right, guys, thank you so much. Um, I really want everyone watching to just see, right? There are people doing this that weren't doing it a year ago. That have crosses that worked. I've I've seen the fruit. There's, I mean, you you gotta be super skeptical to think that it's not a cross. They're doing crosses. They're they're finding monos. They're isolating them. They're they're mon mon crossing. They're diamond crossing. They're ghetto crossing. You can do it too. This is this is where it's gonna happen. This is where we're gonna make these fruit do really cool things. Because more people are doing this. That's that's what's gonna be exciting. And I mean, you guys have already seen it, right? Dave has been on here, and he's been like, God, when I started, right? There was just three cultigens to grow. And Ed said the same thing. Like back in the days, everybody, Mushman was saying it. Everybody's was, it was growing brown cubes. Yeah. So it wasn't had, that long ago, even, <laughs> you right. know, really how boring mm -hmm. that must've been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless they were using them, then it was <laughs> fine. But yeah. yeah, just to grow the, the brown yeah. cubes. <laughs> That's why, that's where this naming problem came from is everybody's growing brown cubes, but they would just look at one and go, Oh, look, Susie Starlight. I have Starlight culture available for sale. Really? That's, that's where that came from. They're just so bored. They had to name them something. Stargazer. Stargazer. Roller coaster. Transcribed peacock. Like, right? That's just what they were just bored. And now we got cool stuff. Right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. A lot of younger guys are spoiled because you guys can just go on like IG yep. and order drugs. Like back in yeah. the day, like 20 years ago, like getting an eight was like a <laughs> fucking epic like adventure. Oh, yeah. Like now you guys Dude, just go to dispensaries and like life. Nah. You had to take your life in your hands. Sometimes you'd call a guy over to your house and you're like, you hear the knock on the door and you're like, we're either getting drugs or we're getting robbed. Yeah. 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 Or that's the cops. Or it's the yeah. cops. Somebody. And I was just true. weak. Yeah, you guys are sport. And remember, we didn't have like mobile phones either. So you were calling some dude's like house phone, and there was like a 50% <laughs> chance his mom was going to answer. Like, hey, oh, can I talk to Dave? <laughs> I need something from him, Miss Jones, that you've never seen me before. 
Yeah, I'm the dude that lives on the other side of town that goes to a different school that your son doesn't know. I'm just right. randomly calling like at 11 o'clock at night to like get something from Not your now, son. Uh, no, now what? 12 year olds are buying LSD on the dark web. Yeah, the exactly. dark web, man. They're getting their wax from a guy in Switzerland. Like it's coming through in micro packages. Brave new world. Yeah, it's, it's all different. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We're, we're, we're going to move on here. Appreciate you guys coming on. Um, if anybody wants to reach out to any of these guys, ask them more about what their journey has been like. Ask them, you know, specifics of what they do what microscope to buy any of that stuff we'll have links in the description below uh maybe not until tomorrow morning because i might be tired by the time this podcast is done we'll see but I'll, I'll try my best to get it up tonight if not i'll be up shortly after uh, all right thank you guys appreciate it thank right. you hey. guys all right let me pop okay one more all right see jeff all right now why didn't your screen move down hold on Dude, that's weird. Hold on. Watch, guys. I'm a. Dis Why is it making me small? That is so bizarre. I noticed on this, uh, what the hell is it called? StreamYard. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just noticed like a couple weeks ago you can change the format of the screen. I didn't. Yeah, I can't. Actually, watch some more YouTube oh, videos. Oh, that's about what streaming. it is, dude. There you go. There you go. That's all it is. But why is it doing it like that? Oh yeah, change the camera too. I noticed that with dichotomous. Sometimes it makes this camera wider yeah. on this thing. That's not what we want. That's like these new little clips. <laughs> but see, this is the one I can't get. It's Who's... a lovely story. Oh, oh, Brady. Oh, I got. Who was it. busy? <laughs> there we go, dude. Holy crap technical well, we do the uh what's that other the hollywood squares i remember that show that was a the gilbert show. godfrey oh yeah somebody told me i do a good gilbert godfrey <laughs> that was oprah winfrey downey <laughs> and if you have ever seen gilbert godfrey do stand up he is ruthless he's I told know. some of the darkest jokes i've ever yeah. heard in my life dude oh I my know. god he seems I, so like friendly and nice on Hollywood Squares or whatever. But oh no, he's, he's nice. Super... He's nice. But yeah, I saw him and Norm and who else was there? Oh, and uh, Bob Saget and uh, oh. anyway, a bunch of those guys. And they Bob Saget's also like the foulest dude on earth, right? Man, they were all just feeding <laughs> off at each other. Oh, it, wow, that it was memorable. Bob Saget thing in half baked. That is like I can't now get that out of my head. Like yeah. I'm so deep for crap. <laughs> I mean, dude. Dude, all I know, yeah, I don't know the new ones. There's a couple great comics working right now, but I feel like uh, that era might be gone. I don't know if I don't know if people are going through enough trauma anymore. Everybody's just sitting Oof. in the rooms. I think they're afraid to say anything now. You'll get canceled. That that could be. Maybe say the I'm wrong thing on the wrong night, and you'll be canceled. I don't know. I like yes. to believe that comedians, that's still right. That is their art is saying all the things we won't say. That's what I, I feel, thought too, but I feel like that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, definitely Dave Chappelle is still, still saying some risque stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, we thought if you saw a stand up comedian and you weren't offended at some point, at least three times during a half hour set, like you shouldn't be there. Like you're not getting entertained. If yes. that person is not offending yes. you in some way, it's not going to be very or funny. Or at least making you just squirm in your seat. At least. Yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. Little. Exactly. That's the point. Yes. Your I'm wife's afraid. pinching you or hitting you in the ribs or something. That should happen yes. at least once. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right. So we got some guys They're you know, they're, they're doing the work. It's cool. They're talking to other people, right? They're going out They're spreading the spores that's what's they're myceliating spreading the spores all that good stuff um it's cool for me to see all that stuff every time somebody says i just had somebody else message me this like super long thing and was just like thank you for having this show it's you know uh gave me encouragement to try to do this i didn't want it for something was holding me back and then for some reason i caught the show and I'm like six episodes in and I'm, I went and bought the stuff and I'm doing it now. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. You know what makes me feel great is to see people like those guys and the many others who are probably out there, you know, and they're afraid to come on or whatever. But the greatest thing about like making 
or t- teaching somebody how to do something is to see them be better than you. Oh yeah. Like yeah. dichotomous has by far like, and his self deprecating attitude is not going to let himself admit this, but he's far <laughs> surpassed anything I could have ever he's done. He's killing it. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. And I don't understand why he like, the other thing like, well, I don't know really know what I'm doing. It's like, dude, like you should be making the videos. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Okay. So maybe, maybe, I, maybe some of that's learned. Maybe that's a trauma response or, I have yeah. a friend who's a really killer drummer and he's always just like, I'd be like, oh man, Amos, I love it when you did such and such on that, on that filler. Oh man, I caught when you caught this beat this way. And he's like, oh yeah, thanks. I just, I just, put, I just hit the drum heads. Yeah. So he's just like I... diminishing or minimizing it. And it's like, no dude, you're literally a session drummer in Los Angeles. You gig like five nights a week. You're obviously phenomenal and you're making decisions, mm. but no, he'll, it always be like, Oh, thanks. So. Yeah, I I just I just do this. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of all these fun, little yeah. like light things. But you know what? Everybody loves him because he never offends anybody. Uh. So that that maybe that's a strategy, right? Like, I I, rem- I, I me I definitely uh you know lo- love me or hate me. There's not new too many people that were just like, oh yeah, geeky's fine. No, yeah, you know the thing people is, people I- fucking love me or they fucking wanted to kill me cool yeah. i'm used to it man i've been doing that for almost 50 years cool exactly you know and i i, I mean i hate to get out more but i literally have a post-it note in my kitchen that says remember you'll be dead soon yes because we we're all, all gonna be dead soon and like you know you might have 50 years you might have 20 years you might have a day but like at some point we're all gonna be dead and none of this is gonna mean jack shit and dude, <laughs> so... yes and let me tell you this as somebody who takes care of old people um I take care of this one guy who lives by us. Uh, he's like friends with Warren Buffett. He's worth over a billion. When he comes in, he comes in with like three nurse practitioners and his private physician. And his money doesn't yeah, solve that problem exactly. one bit. He can buy more. He can buy all the nurses he wants, but he's falling apart. Or, or even, I mean, just doing something that you said, like, there's a nice quote. It's always, I think it's Thomas Jefferson. It's like, in order to, it's something like, in order to get something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. Yep. And like that first step, there's all kinds of adages and sayings or whatever, but like, you've got to take that first step. Just yep. do it. Like for real, like that Nike logo, just do it. Yo, like, that's I, like I, the best, that's the best quote that quote sums up mm. a million other quotes just do it mm-hmm. yeah you won't regret the things you didn't do or you won't regret the things you did you regret the things you don't do um yeah. doing what is the other one uh do the doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome is is something akin to madness mm-hmm. they're all saying like if you really get into quotations there's like just some core just like there's some saying of there's really only seven stories and they go around parading themselves as new stories all the time. But there's, yeah, there's just really some fundamental truths. And it's. And it's scary. Th- it. Things are, I understand, like things are scary, man. I sent out like those first mono LCs and I haven't slept. Like I had a fucking nightmare last night. You know, I'm like, oh my God. Like I woke up at three in the morning and I shit you not. I went out and looked at my pile of fucking tote monos. And I'm like, if I see a fucking fruit body on there, I'm going to shoot myself in the fucking head. <laughs> and of course, there were none because I've checked them like 50 times. But I'm like, it's three in the fucking morning. If there's a goddamn pin on one of those plates, I'm going to fucking burn this place down. This is what our brains And you'll never do. see me. This is what I write. Right. You've had this for a year. It's never dicaryatized. But tonight it's going to. This is what I know do. exactly. It's irrational, you know. This is like, what my kids uh. do every night. My my one kid. I'm not afraid of monsters, but can you close the closet door for me? <laughs> what? What's in? But you'll ne- that's the thing you'll never Nothing. know. You know, at some but, point you gotta just do it. It's like it's it's like that old ghetto boy song. Oh man, homie, my mind is playing tricks on me. Oh yeah, that's what that's... it is, man. Mind's playing yeah, tricks I'm... on us. I'm partial to gangster love. <laughs> sure, gangster sure. boogie, gangster yes. boogie, gangster boogie. <laughs> that uh, was that Steve Miller, the one with the Steve Miller riff in it. Oh, he's so, uh, got that. Uh, it's not called the Space Cowboy. Steve, there's a Steve Miller song, and that's 
going in the background, but then it's got a heavy bass. It's called All Gangster right. Love. All right, guys. I, I just figured classic. it out. We're going to have to do reaction videos with Ed to um, music. We'll just add oh. a show me a song. I don't know. I'll sh Yeah, we'll see. We'll do that. Yeah, that could be fun, dude. I listen to some pretty scary shit. Like, but I everything from gangster rap to every all over the place. I mean, Infinite you like Guar, right? You like Guar? Yeah. You like oh, yeah. I love to... Oh, yeah. Dude, now there's. So oh, yeah. Lama Sepultura God. definitely has. I don't even know what Sepultura is doing now. They were doing uh, some other uh, shit. I don't know. All these bands got like yeah. side projects. I forgot what the other one. All I know is if you think you don't like heavy metal, go, go to a heavy metal concert. I I went uh, a couple years ago to, uh, what was it? Um, God, was a oh, Riot Fest and saw Slipknot. And I mean, I don't care if you like Slipknot or not, but if you watch Slipknot in concert, Mm. it's pretty hard it's a pretty compelling stage performance they are phenomenal monster musicians and oh, just yeah. the sound coming off that stage is just undeniable they are yeah really the crowds cool. too i mean jesus oh, yeah. i'd be afraid to go to one of those shows now i'd be like way 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 in the back like <laughs> yeah you're not you're not <laughs> those like walls anymore. of death they got now where the dude like at whacking or waking or whatever and like yeah. hundreds of dudes just it's oh, like no 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 that's not for me and it's just all sweaty dudes anyway yeah exactly. trying to accidentally <laughs> punch you and their their little sweaty fist just rolls off your body anyway dude. yeah exactly so, you know i um, like when i used to get in the pit like elbows stayed like elbow level yes. now people are doing this oh, kind of shit it's like they're doing that fucking brazilian shit it's like dude that's not the way a pit works you're not trying to hurt people but it's like somebody lost the are. fucking. No, they are. Yeah, so yeah. weird, but everything gets taken their... too far, Ed. The damn everything Red Bulls gets... and their energy yeah. drinks. <laughs> Shit, that might be what it is. Who knows? It might just be Red Bulls. Ah, uh, they just got too. My twelve-year-old's drinking these drinks. I didn't. I thought they were just like a juice drink. Come to find out, <laughs> it's got like two hundred milligrams of caffeine in it. I'm like, exactly. God dang it, kid. That Garuna and some vitamins you don't probably know about. Perothenol, some shit. You no. Know what? This is my chemical cocktail. It wakes me up in the morning. Yeah. I the color probably it. should give it away. Yeah, it glows out in the dark. <laughs> All right. So so we talked for a long time about, right, different ways to breed. We got pretty mm -hmm. deep a couple times. You know, we're talking about haploids. We're talking about monos. We're talking about dicarions. We're, we, we did all that. It inspired some people. But throughout all that, you were just relentlessly isolating monos ruthlessly. Ooh, dude, I got four stacks. Yeah, I got four stacks. It's, it's really, really pretty straightforward. It is. Once now, you understand I got a, it. I got a question for you. So in the beginning, I know you were like ghetto diluting or maybe like a one one or two step serial diluting. I just had one where I thought I was going to be able to get it based on how many spores I saw on the gill. I thought, cool, I'm just going to drop this piece in. It was too many. Everything was dicarian. So mm. I was like, crap, I should have done one more. Or you never know if maybe you're like, did I shake it enough? You know, maybe yeah. everything was still clumped together. You just never know. Yeah. But yeah. when did you, because I'm pretty sure based on the stuff you've said, there's a point where you were doing less of the dilution and more of the, the grab and drag. Yeah, th this is funny because somebody just reminded me last night, the original reason it was because it was difficult to get swabs here. Oh. And I didn't want to take a swab. I had one swab. My friend got a pair and she gave me one and I had one. And it's like, let's try to see what we can get. And I realized that the second I touch that swab to an agar surface, I, it's fucked. Like, it's a one-off, you know? So I was right. thinking, like, wow, how can I keep this if it doesn't work, if my media is not right? How can I use this swab multiple times? And right. that's when I did. I was, you know, streaking. Everybody knows streaking. And I was like, I was literally, it was one of those, like, kind of moments where I'm, like, streaking this thing. And then I'm like, well, I could probably get one spore maybe off here. And then about maybe at about the same time, I like Dichotomous' story. I had a plate that only had like a single little thing on it. And I thought, like, maybe that's a single spore. 
Like, and then, so I checked it and then I'm like, well, I've seen a lot of contaminants and that doesn't look like a contaminant. And, and one of the things you, you get sort of a vibe after you look under the scope for a while, like monos for me, I don't know. I brought this up. They tend to have more perpendicular branching. Yeah. Like here's kind of like a little pro tip or whatever. If you get a, I, and I brought it up and I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because it's just got a single nucleus. Mono carry-ons under the scope at 400X, they look different. And you start to get a feel for what they should look like. And then, I don't know, of course, you know, on a plate of die carry and all that. Um, but, yeah, so I just basically, I, I kind of all came together and I realized, like, this might be a better way to get single spores, which is all we really want to do. All of that shit. You know, it might be like all the prep. Like, you know, if you're in a heart surgery theater... And all of that shit, like the five hours of prep that goes in there, and finally the the surgeon walks in and cuts the dude open. You're like, it's it's like go time. Like all of this stuff is just literally for us to get a single like six micron right. fucking spore. Right. Like all of this equipment and all of this stuff is all to just grow a single freaking spore. Yeah. So however you get to that single spore doesn't matter. Could be an accident. Could be a grab and drag, could be a cereal dilution, could be a ghetto dilution, could be maybe just a spore print that doesn't want to germinate. And you see that one spore like a right. month later and you're like, maybe that's a mono carry on. Um, any way you get there is 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 fine. Yeah, no. we were just uh, I was talking to Jeff. So, OK, he brought over some fruit and we're like, so let's start with pigmented fruit and so we did that whole thing and it's like okay cool we we see he, he was happy we finally got a scope working we can get into that a little bit about some mm. issues with the scopes because i think a lot of people some are buying new but some are buying used and then if you buy a used scope you you better know how to tune that scope up yeah but but so we got him going and uh i i was talking about how with the pigmented fruit um, you know, it has a look. You can kind of once you know what those, the hue that those uh, the lamella get, you can kind of tell um, their mm. spores on them. I said I still will. I will confirm a fruit from a tub to just make sure and to see what my spore load is, all that good stuff. I said, but with an albino tub, I go. I've had it where one had spores, and one didn't. One's maybe just a little underdeveloped from the other one. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, okay. So, and then I, I showed him the the albino spores and and just took him a minute to see them and all that. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, great. And it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit mm -hmm. of experience. Uh, a lot of people on the microscopy channel on the Discord, they'll, they'll send a picture, they get the scope, they're playing with it. They go, are these spores? And then one of us will go in and go, yep, that's a spore. You got it. You can, you can see you know, the germ pore and you can see the, what's the other side called? I forget, but yeah, you, you know, you can start learning the structures and know what to look for. It just takes a little bit of work. Yeah. It's just practice like anything else, you know, like you can't get discouraged because it's hard. You know, you might see that's what, that's kind of back to the YouTube videos. I, I really don't like the, like, especially microscopy videos where all you see is this perfect polish, like here's my, and the, the focal plane is perfect. And this whole setup like takes maybe yeah. 10 minutes like to do a squash mount yeah maybe five or 10 minutes but if it's the first time you're doing it and you don't know where your focal plane is and you don't know how to use the knobs like my scope i can just i literally i know where everything is it's like driving a car yeah. like i know how to move yeah. it left right up down do, do, do. but if you've never um used a scope you know you're you're that's not going to be very familiar so you're going to be looking off to the side then then you lost your field of view and then you're like, oh, I hit the wrong thing. And yep. it's all practice. Yep. Nobody does this stuff perfectly the right time. That's why those, right. those YouTube videos that somehow imply that like, look, I do it perfect every time. It's yep. like ridiculous. Or no one realizes um, like, oh, cool. So there's this new, you know, paper out on this species and here are all these cool, you know, micrographs of, different gill structures and you know different cystidia and all that stuff and they don't realize that somebody might have made like 20 mounts before they finally got yeah. uh you know certain tissue uh quality in, in that or whatever and oh jeff, yeah jeff and i just had that where the, he brought a plate over the agar was kind of more firm when i'm doing 
the monos I usually do a little bit softer agar it makes it easier to cut up for me his was just a little bit higher harder maybe a little drier and so I had to get these like real thin razor blades cut my little square put it on edge you know hold it with something else and then like cut the thinnest piece of it I could because the first time I tried to do it just like off the plate it just wasn't squishing down it wasn't smashing oh down. It was I'll like squirt, say, yeah I do squash mounts end. for everything now same yeah but I couldn't it would squirt out the side so yeah. we redid it and we got it finally got you know it thin enough and then it squashed real nice so it oh like, yeah oh cool but like all these tedious little that's that's most of the work sometimes is just getting the right even mm. the right part of the the growth like yeah you know, yeah exactly you don't want the oldest thickest growth you're, mm -hmm. you're gonna be looking at a maze it's gonna be impossible to see yeah and, and sometimes some plates just don't like i was looking at a die care i had a plate that looked funny and i i was like i know there's a die carry on but i was looking at it and it, it just didn't look right and but yeah it had clamps but there was probably one clamp out of every two or three hundred septa like you just do yes. sometimes they just don't get clamps at every septa most of the time they don't or and then the vice versa when you're doing the mono the most difficult thing about monos is is not is looking for no clamps because yeah you have to make sure that you don't see any clamps so it's like what point do you stop looking <laughs> you know, like, right it's like okay i've looked at like five different mounts and i've seen probably 50 fields of feet like when do i stop <laughs> man i'll never tell you, I you, you, yeah, you could just go on forever. I, I'll do two different things. So you can either keep it, you can keep your stage in one spot and mm -hmm. rack your focus, trying to see through, you know, the subtle little layers and all that stuff. Um, or you can keep it in one general field of view. I like doing this one first. I kind of get where I feel like I, I got one of the planes in focus. And then I'll move the stage around quickly because I like to find... Every once in a while, your your slide will get like a long section where most of it like squirted out, but maybe some strands stayed. I love getting several long strands of hyphae where I can literally look all along it, see septa, yeah. and if I see a bunch of septa with nothing yeah, there, I yeah. feel pretty good. Exactly. Yeah, on the same. Times, yeah. Right on the same hyphae. Oftentimes, only the terminal cell will have a clamp too but if you could see two or three clamps in a row on the same high fill thread yes. like that's fucking awesome yeah right yes but then there'll be other ones that you'll see like septa 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 and not a single clamp and you're like why is that i don't know i don't know. oh before but on that real quick if people don't know when you're when you're swinging the turret most scopes these days uh i think they call it like con focal or whatever but it'll have the same focal plane so if you start off on the 10x objective and switch it to the 40, it should be like, don't move the stage up and down, just spin right. the turret. Um, and if it's a modern scope, they've adjusted the optics so that you'll just have to use the fine focus yep. yeah. to go up and down. So don't, don't, I see the students doing this. Sometimes they'll crank the stage all the way down when they load a new slide. And then you've got to start oh, over yeah. again, like leave the stage once you've got it pretty much at the, so you start off on your 10x and you find your focal plane and then you just simply turn the the turret for the next objective don't don't like crank it down and then rip off your slide and that's a waste of time now so it's funny you say that all my scopes can do that even at the 40x but jeff brought one over and it looked like i thought it was newer maybe it was slightly older model almost similar to my am scope but when we went to the 40x, I did have to move the the stage down a touch. So I think depending could be the on, objectives. Yeah, they they sell on, different objectives. If it was a brand name scope, like sometimes the objectives they were designed for maybe another scope that. Oh uh, right. So they have to physically move the lens, you know, like to 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 get it to do that. And maybe it was from an older scope, or maybe somebody switched out a lens that you don't know they did. Or, yeah, we had to do that. And then his, the alignment with the condenser and all that wasn't good. Yeah. So we had to adjust that. And it actually wasn't even sitting in there properly. It had yeah. Been yeah. Locked up. Yeah. I had a friend bought a brand new AM scope and he was like, what is this fucked up? And all he had, there was their set screws on the side of like the condenser and he just didn't have them screwed in properly. 
work perfectly fine. Because that's where you're going to get that weird diffraction and shit. You'll see like rainbows and stuff on the edge and the optics. It's just not going to focus right and everything is shit. So make sure you like, yeah, I got all those little set screws and everything like properly worked out. Yeah, figure out what they do. Close up your, yeah. you know, close up the iris on everything so you can see it when it's moving and you can see it through the, the eyepiece. And then just mm -hmm. turn one and see how it makes it move. And you should be able mm -hmm. to get it where you can center that in the stage. And that's yeah, what you want. Yes, you want the, the exactly. light beam to be shooting right. up the dead center of the optic. And, and then you're... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that thing like uh, the di the iris diaphragm condenser, most scopes at the under the stage, they'll have a little dial or a little lever that's yeah. got like a lever <laughs> that goes back and forth. And that stops down the aperture. And it's still like an old school camera. Yep. <laughs> if you stop that down, you'll get a much better depth of field. And um, <laughs> um, basically, if you've got that wide open and, and it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> misaligned or whatever, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. And then when you stop it down, it's even going to make it work. So like, right. Yeah. Play with all the little things on the scope, figure out how they work. There's also microscopy videos too, you know, that aren't about right. mushrooms. <laughs> People look there's at other plenty. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty. Um, yeah. but just play with it. See what it does. Figure it out. And then it, if that doesn't work, then yeah, start watching some videos, but you gotta put in that work. You gotta figure out how to use it. You wouldn't buy a gun and just go, so how does this thing work? <laughs> right, you you want to learn the, what the pin is and uh, you, you'd, you'd hopefully <laughs> want to learn how to use a, a lethal weapon. So if, yeah. right, you just gotta learn how to use this stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, that old gun safety. I remember people even hand me those airsoft guns. The first thing I do is clear it and drop the clip. And I just see people like handing these like airsoft guns to each other and start pointing. I'm like, what the oh fuck are God. you doing? You yeah. fucking clear it and drop the clip. It's like, I don't know where it's like, you've not handled real guns that can kill people. <laughs> you, yeah. Oof. You only, right. You only point a gun at things you want to kill. Yeah. So maybe yeah, exactly. you do want to point it at some people. I don't I know. An accident. It might, might be your, you know, your, your wife or hunting accidents. <laughs> yeah. I'm and I watched a lot of crime documentaries. People used to kill each other for like ten thousand dollar life insurances and stuff. Oh, I think they still do that. <laughs> wow, still do that. So yeah, guys. So um, a lot of people intimidated about buying a scope. I think I probably convinced easily fifty people to buy a microscope, mm. and then I keep thinking, okay, well, I got the scope now. Now they're gonna start asking me a bunch of questions, and they don't. So I'm like, are you just buying these scopes, and they're just sitting there? So yes, use it. Yes, some of them. So are. guys, I'm challenging you. If you guys, if I encourage you to buy a scope, if watching Ed's video got you to buy a scope, and you haven't messed with that scope, just tell yourself New Year's resolution. I'm going <laughs> to learn how to use a scope. If you're intimidated by the fungi, I always tell people just buy a twenty dollar prepared slide set. Yeah. At least then you can start learning how to use your uh -huh. microscope with a good slide. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, go on Amazon, get one of those like cheap. beginners, like um, water samples or whatever shit they sell, They're you so know, cheap. bacteria. Yeah, get They're a properly so mounted slide that's got a good um, thin section and you can actually, yes. and you know, show your kids some stuff like, look, this is a paramecium. And then you go out and get some water samples from the, you know, and then from it gets the real fun. Yeah. Yeah, for real. If you got kids, man, kids love microscopes. Dude, all Guarantee, my kids now. My eight-year-old brings in dead bugs all the time. V-lines down here, pulls the scope out without me, rips a wing off with tweezers, sets it yeah. on. She can already do it herself, eight years old. That It yeah. opens up a yeah. whole, and then after that, they're going to be like, what's a chemical? What's an atom? What's a, you know, what's a quantum? What a, what? A, like, they'll be like all this smaller, you know, you see those zooming in, yeah. zooming out pictures of the universe and down to a, a quark or whatever yeah. and it's like that putting that shit in like little kids head is like a good thing scale scale uh, yeah it is every yeah. man when if you can actually start comprehending scale of numbers mm -hmm. or of distance yeah or exactly. you know microscopic distance. versus telescopic i mean it changes a lot of stuff changes your perspective on a whole lot of things yes 100%. yeah for real man hair things like that weird stuff that you didn't eat like your body is full of a, it's like you can do all kinds of weird stuff. 
like all kinds of weird and gross stuff you never knew, like growing on your body and yep. dead skin and yep, yeah, and fingernails. And... Yeah, I remember. Uh, so Jeff <laughs> Jeff made some kind of like, holy cow, there's so many spores. And I was like, yeah, man, that's like Ed one time said, like if you just touched a spore print with a needle or like uh -huh. a wet tip of a needle, you'd have maybe a thousand spores on the tip of that needle. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like I don't think people understand how little these are. Yeah, it's it's a kind of it's a, like you said, it's a mind boggling. You know, it's got kind of said like numbers. Once you get past like a million, like I don't think anybody really has any concept what a billion dollars is. Man, did you watch that? It's like, there, there's a YouTube video of a guy who count, he makes a grain of rice represent $100,000. So then he shows a pile of 10 grains of rice, right? And he says this tiny little pile of 10 grains of rice is a million dollars. And then he goes, let me show you how much a billion dollars is. And it's like, it's 10,000 or, or it's a hundred thousand grains of rice. So it's just this giant pile of rice, right? A very large pile of rice. And then he goes, now let, let me show you what, you know, Jeff Bezos current net worth is. And so he shows this, he, at that point, he doesn't count it out. He counted out the first. Oh, weighs it. But, but he just weighs it as accurately yeah. as he can. And he's like, so here's this giant, I mean, it must have been a hundred pounds of rice, something ridiculous. He's like, this is Jeff Bezos's net worth. And then he like grabs, he cuts it in, in the shot and he goes, here's like a $50 million house in Aspen. And he just tosses it away. And you just look at that pine. You're just like, it's nothing. Yeah. People, I don't, I don't know what they think the difference between a million and a billion is, but it's 10,000 fold difference. It's not. Yeah, well, because we have no rep, we have no scale. I mean, it's like if you're getting directions, it's people now, you know, like nobody, people don't understand like what a hundred yards is. You'll be like, oh, that's a football field. But then people are so bad at doing distances. We, yeah. yeah. I'll, I mean, these guys, I, I'll be like, you know, oh, yeah, go up here, make a right and go like 200 meters down on the left side. And they're like looking at me like, what the fuck is 200 meters? I'm like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, like, a you know, like maybe like 250 yards. But like we have meters here, you know, and it's just like they don't they have no idea. 200 meters could be anywhere from like, I don't know, a couple steps to like you know, 14 football fields to them. They have yeah. no concept right. of what like, 200 meters Man, is. Like, oh. If you ever get to Los Angeles, California, go to the Griffith, uh, Griffith Observatory. It's where uh, the end of like uh, Rebel Without a Cause was was filmed. Anyway, it's a, a, a cool, um, cool observatory. But outside, it's this immense, just massive courtyard area. And they have this little fountain, some statue. I forget who it's a statue of. And they say, like, so the statue is the sun. And then they start giving you a mm -hmm. scale. They show you a scale and they show you, okay, so you take, like, 10 steps out, you know, and you get, um, what is it, fucking Mercury or Mars? What's the first yeah, planet? I Mercury, I always forget. Mercury. Yeah, Venus, Mercury. I forget. Yeah, I can't even remember now, dude. I used to know. Because shit. Mercury is, and then Venus. That was that was my gut was Mercury, Venus. But anyway, yeah. so whatever it is, so it, they start pacing them out, right? And so like all the ones before, uh, you know, the big asteroid belt, you know, they're they're a little distance away, and you're like, oh look, I'm here's Earth, and there's the Sun, and then you keep walking, <laughs> you're walking for like a quarter mile before you get to Uranus, and it's like wow like until you get put into those scenarios you don't realize or 400 x that means this thing mm -hmm. has been doubled 400 times it's 400 times the magnification of what it is in order to just see it still as a small dot on your on your eyepiece mm. yeah it's so little yeah which makes it makes it even more fair like when you see spore dust like i went into my tent earlier this morning i realized like it's all there's like spore dust <laughs> like yeah. i thought i hope it's spore, but it's like wow that's i can see that it's like that's probably like billions millions of spores i'm like eh. man did you see that it. um there's a guy on instagram he's got one of the most phenomenal uh um channels for just cool novel uh fungus content 
uh, Mushroom Mundo, I think it's called, or Mush Mundo. I forget how it is, but anyway, this guy's got great content, and he always gets these like odd videos of Chinese uh, mushroom farms. Oh, I saw that one with the Ganoderma. The Ganoderma like spore ejection is just like sitting mm. like this on top of the the bracts or whatever that the, uh -huh. the you know the paddle growth is, and I made some comment of like, what the fuck are they? doing with these with all these spores and apparently they do an extract from them yeah yeah, yeah. Like, no shit he's like yeah that's actually like the the main like that's the prized product from them but mm -hmm. dear god man like so yeah we do myceliated grain and then like fruit bodies they go like oh real old school and take the spores <laughs> like, oh my god uh, yeah it's crazy so yeah got it got to get familiar with the scope mm. because otherwise you're just going to get real frustrated you're going to go well i think i think i mm -hmm. isolated it and then you're going to keep playing games it's not going to work out and i mean i don't know about ed but even if i'm doing serial dilution i might put 20 or 30 dots i got these little loops um you know like a little disposable mm -hmm. loop that i use and it can dole out a real tiny dot of water and so I can get a bunch of, yeah. little, you know, inoculation points on there. And out of 30, if I get the dilution right, I might only get like three or two or four. Like, yeah, it's not a I lot. Was, I was thinking I might have to do, I did the grab and drag with some of my fresh starfish things. And it, there's just too many spores there. Yeah. Like, you know what I did these, I literally took the number 11 scalpel blade and I, Heated it. I use your induction thing. I got it red hot and then let it sit for about a minute. Make sure it was maybe two to make sure it was cooled down. And I literally touched the scalpel blade tip to the spore swab and then just did lines. I didn't do the serpentine oh, thing. I just did lines and I did like one it. line, two line, three line, four lines. The fourth line is still just a smear of mycelium. It's like there's so many fucking spores there. Yeah, you could. And they were literally like two hours old like i just swabbed them yeah. and i might have to do a serial dilution to get yeah. like less spores i know so yeah like i said that little I, I made a little grid one time to make sure like I, it's got like a pattern so in case you know some contaminant jumps in there or whatever at least if it's in the little grid like a tic-tac-toe right. thing see that's at least a you science know move right there dude that's that's your science <laughs> level i'm not doing that but yeah that is definitely the the super pro way to do that it's like a little OCD thing. They used to yeah. sell plates that actually had grids had already printed on them. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, they, you got to get at these monos quick too. Whether you're doing the oh. um, the uh, cereal dilution, like I these I I sub I put five on a plate, and here's another trick I figured out. I'm leaving tomorrow, so what I'm going to do? I put my five monos on there, but they're growing too fast. So I cut. I might. I, totally I don't know do if I have that. enough plates. <laughs> Dude, I might have enough plates where I can get them all on a single plate, but I'm coming back. I'm going to be gone for three days and I think I'm going to have to do some executive decisions later. And I do that trench even thicker, by the way. I, that's just, what I was doing. Yeah, I might go and yeah, look just even thicker cut all, but the colony. I, 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 I maybe leave, I, I leave I some, I, but, but yeah, I cut like little half circles around it. Yes. Something yeah. similar. I'm, Cause I, I get that same situation. I can't, I got it right now, dude. Right before this podcast started, I walked by my agar. Uh, hold on. I know, me too. Me too. That's why I put. I pulled all these because I got to do these. Yeah. Like after the podcast, or I got I got yeah. a garlic mac right now. I got two. I did the grab and drag, and there's only two tiny, super light growths. But of course, they're right next to each other. Yeah. And they're about to touch. So I'm, this whole podcast in my head, I'm just like, is it touching right now? Yeah, this transki, that exactly. I got yeah. two right there. That They're okay now, but give them another three hours and they'll be touching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're careful, sometimes you can get the outside. But like, so what I've done here, if you do, if they do touch, you can go back to the edge. Yes, like, right. the, you know, that's away from where they've touched. Yes. That usually works. It's not a complete loss. And worst case scenario, you get a dicarion. Right. Yeah. You get a clean dicarion from two monos, which is what you would have got anyway. Right. At the end of the day, a monoculture comes from two spores. Right. Like this idea people have that it's all the spores. No. 
when you have a monoculture that inevitably at the beginning came from two spores, right? Just yep. like a baby comes from two people. Yeah. Like same idea. Right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but, man. Is that bad? The, um, so, okay. So let, the, this is, this is the whole impetus for this. So all this work, all these crosses, I mean, dude, no one's crossed as much shit as you have. I, I have not met them, if, if, if there is somebody who has. And if they have, I didn't even know till I they're working the in the shadows of this community, and they're not talking about it. To my knowledge, you have done an insane amount of crosses. I mean, look at this guy. He can't even stop. He's just doing it right now. Um, <laughs> like, where are you from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. I get okay. it. will be okay. will be okay. I get it. Um, but anyway, so to my knowledge, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that after a year, and as someone who is an actual scientist with an actual degree in mycology that he got from one of the hard asses, hard asses you could possibly get a degree in mycology from, that if you're going to go ahead and say, I'm selling a monocarion, it is that yeah. as as confidently as you possibly could be yes. you know this thing you're selling is absolutely foolproof mono carry on so let's That's let's true. talk about that and to my knowledge you're the first person to successfully do it now uh, yeah I, well i was trying to think I if anybody tell. um i know people were se tried selling plates before right i think people I can think of one person who tried and, and it didn't go so well. Um, I have said from early on that I can't imagine you just can't jump the gun on selling these things. Cause I've had ones that were monos mm. for five transfers. Mm. And then I just sat them back there waiting to do something with them. And uh, I go look at them later and it's like, Oh, you son of a bitch. They That's can nice. get through several transfers and kind of hide out on you because it's yeah. always based on where you're going to grab a transfer from. So depending upon how you're transferring off of this and where you're taking it from, they can kind of hide from you. Yeah. And they'll look different on different media too. So it's a combination of the difference on different media and being confident with your microscopy skills. And um, yeah, I, like these, that's why you shouldn't really worry about these too much because if you, if you get one, that's the you're really gonna only focus on one later, right? So yeah, I hope. I mean, I you know to be honest, is it, if it if it does what I carry it ties later, I don't know. It's not the end of the fucking world. I'm a hundred percent sure it's not going to. But right. you know that's the thing. It, it's like how you that, like you were saying about dropping something. I can't believe that people actually contacted you and mentioned uh, dude, that they well, saw me drop something. Well, they, That's they, like so They weird. had an agenda, though. They had an agenda. Oh, okay. I can't imagine agenda. somebody would actually. It wasn't It wasn't just innocently. It, it was a lot oh, more. Oh, okay. It was a lot more. Yeah, more that's the thing. But... Uh, people are going to like look to try to. Yeah, the hate, it, hate is going to hate. Love right, is going to love. Here, here we go. My real name is made up. I like that. It's a cool, uh, cool name. I'm a noob and I ordered one. Ed. Oh. There you go. That's it. That's, that's yeah. what it's all about. It's so, probably a good way. If you, if you get it, you're going to get addicted to monos. <laughs> addicted to and, monos. Uh, Dude, there's your t-shirt. You were talking about making some t-shirts. I think that's a t-shirt. Yeah. Addicted to monos. Well, I, I still one. like, I mean, you know, I still like the diamond thing and the ghetto yeah. swabbing too. I think that's yeah. great too. Yeah. Um, like you were saying earlier, I mean, what's the worst case you're going to grow more fruit? Like, I don't, right. I don't know. People just, you know, the big thing with like ghetto swabbing for me or double swabbing was that I just very rarely have two cultigens that are at the perfect time to swab both of them. Right. Yeah. So it actually never occurred to me to do like double swabbing because I most people probably don't have two that are ready to go at the same exact time. I, I rarely do. Um, maybe within a 24 hour period, but yeah. then you're getting into things like which ones are going to germinate faster. Like these plates are only like, these are less than 48 hours old. 
you know and if you're if you're doing like a thing with like a swab like maybe an older swab and then you you double swab a second fresher fruit like that's just gonna probably not work very well yeah yeah for me it doesn't happen too often but when it does i'll go for it but yeah it's it's not well that's why i like monos you you can keep growing them pretty much in perpetuity you know because they don't they just grow like other cultures so you can keep subbing them and you can make liquid culture um that was the thing that i realized like yeah about maybe six or eight months ago i'm like wait a minute like i think this would be cool if like people could get a tube of monoculture um else or mono carry on lc like they can just squirt it or you make more plates like, you know, that's the thing. If you're if you're gonna buy one, fuck expand it. I know people are going yeah. to. That's the first thing I'd do. If you order a mono from me, the very, very first thing I would do is inject it into more fresh liquid media. Yeah. That would be the do, before do a test I, plate. Do a test plate. Do a test plate, yeah. Test plate and then and expand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course. That's like I mean, I'm not another silly illusion that like, oh, you're not gonna expand it. No, by next month there'll be like 45 new people that have exactly the same mono. And that's why next month I'm going to put out another one <laughs> because that's why I think I'm not going to, I'm not going to do them all at once. I've got tons of them over there. Um, yeah. but next month. And like- also now, so let's talk about this. So, okay. I have, let's say I'm sitting on right now, I think about 40 cultigens that, that I've kind of narrowed down. That's pretty good for me. But okay, let's say I, let's say I'm a new grower. I got six cultigens that that I'm maintaining on plates, and I go buy one of your uh, mono carry on syringes. I've I can now play games with six yeah. of those. Yeah, and now it gets it gets more interesting if you think about it like this. If your skill set includes going back to spore, every time you go back to spore, you can replay that game with the mono, and it will be potentially doing something different yeah you'll be kind of like back crossing yeah yeah I mean, that just, new, nice. just slightly new genetics just slightly, oh yeah yeah so if, if it, you, it gets so let's say quick. you do these six <laughs> and one you really like well you keep working that line but then now if you got spores of that one that you that dicarion that you crossed it with regrow that and keep doing that one and all your different g uh, your different generations of that that you do the the monocross with might give you slightly different fruit you could really kind of work towards something specific (laughs) and never ends you could buy one (laughs) literal mono and never (laughs) run out of shit to do ever yeah it's it's kind of remarkable that like just looking at these little tubes or a plate it's like the potential in there is just it's almost like it's astronomical. Speaking of numbers, yeah. when you do the numbers, it's like it very, you could very easily uh, like in a weekend, probably like uh, create enough work for you to do for the rest of your life. life. Lifetime. Yep. All right. So I saw a question here. I have not been checking out this. Uh, um, the, the live wow. Chat too yeah, much, I but... just. I look around my house just thinking like, wow, the genetics that's just laying around is like incredible. I, I, it gives you a fascination for nature. Oh, just yeah. uh, the and, diversity. And in the, genetics. The genetic. Yeah, it's yeah. really like mind blowing to think yeah. what we can do. That's part of the, the main reason is, you know, I want to like we talked about last year. I want to get people into this because it's going to take a lot of people and, and they may, maybe they just find something like their little pet. Um, but it could be something really brown breaking. It could just be another brown cube, another albino, whatever. Just, it's just fun. Like this is the fun part for me. Like it really, once you start to understand a little bit of what you're doing, it becomes fun. Like when you eliminate your trick problems and you figured out how to do, you know, your substrate, it becomes actually quite fun. It's not, I know it's very stressful. A lot of people, and I get a lot of these messages that are like, oh, like, you know, I listen to you and like, I don't have this problem or that problem anymore. And it's like, wow, it's because I was there, you know, everybody's been there. Everybody has, you get like a three month period, a six month period where everything's turning green and you don't know why. And it's like, then you feel, 
you know, you realize like, oh, your pressure cooker's got a fucked up seal on it or something. Right. It's just like, and then you just end up like, it gets really, really frustrating. And then if you don't have other people around to help you, it's really lonely. <laughs> it can be lonely. You just keep getting frustrated. Oh yeah. Those are the, and those are the, I can always read the frustration right away and I cannot help myself, but I have to answer those people. I'm getting a lot more blunt mm. about it though. I don't pussyfoot around. I used to be like real kind and gentle. And I'm just like, this is what you need to do next. When you do that, let me know. Yeah. And then we can keep talking. I just, I had to do that. All right. So Michael Mama's asked real quick, if we have a swab and we want to cross it with a fruit that's ready to swab, what's the best process? So uh, I was just talking to Jeff about this. And this was just in general about the idea of, I remember seeing a post on Facebook one time and a guy said something about, I like my swabs thick. <laughs> and, and I'm like, cool, dude, that's great. You know, if you're just jamming it in an agar dish or you're just like whacking it across the, the plate and you're just growing fruit and you don't care, great. If you are trying to isolate monocarions, you 4,000% do not want a super saturated swab. Mm -hmm. The the tuft, you would have to pull off that. And I just got these new swabs. There's like a shellac or something on the, the surface. I got to get new swabs. They're driving me crazy. So what I have to do now is just cut like a sliver, a real tiny sliver, and then pluck that off and do my grab and drag. But the, the, so think about the theory and Ed can correct me if I'm wrong here. If you have two swabs from two different cultigens, ideally you want them to be germinating at the same time so that the, you don't want one to like really dominate everything and then have this maybe never quite get to take off. You, you ideally want them to be about the same freshness. So you don't mm -hmm. want, you don't want to swab one fruit one week and then a week later mm -hmm. swab the other from what everybody has ever told me, even 24 hours might be too long. I think the, the real old school guys mm -hmm. have been doing double, double swabs for a long time. Like Dave Wombat. I think he said, it's yeah. like, always got to at least be the same day. Like he might swab one in mm -hmm. the morning and one after lunch. Um, I have never done that for me. If I don't have spores ready to go at the exact same time, I'll basically run like 10 swabs with the one fruit, put that to the side, grab the, the next bag and, and, and then do those next 10 all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I do not always go back and forth. Some people say you got to go back and forth. You got to layer the swabs. I don't know if that logic, I don't know if I buy that. I don't know if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. If you do it, it doesn't hurt, but this is my concern. Yeah, right. people do the zigzag, like they'll yeah. do one this way and then one yeah, vertical and one horse. Sure, I don't know. I don't know if you need to do that. I mean, it doesn't, whatever, whatever weird thing you want to do. The idea is you just want to get the spores together. And my thought is if they're literally right next to each other, one on top of the other, and then I grab a tuft of that and I, I'm dragging that through something, mm -hmm. that's going to likely give me a cross. Right. Here, here's the main idea that I think people maybe that are doing double swabbing don't understand is that you are trying to get two separate spores, one from each cultigen to come together. If you have a bunch, if you have a clump of 10 of cultigen A here and cult they are very, remember, they're going to mate with each other. Themselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem with the timing and the density, et cetera, et cetera. You have to get a spore from this one and this one, a single spore. The problem is why we use tween, why we use cereal dilution, why we do the ghetto uh, grab and drag is because we want a single spore. And if you do all this work and you've got two spores from the first cultigen, you're just making another F number. Like you, you're just doing the same thing. So it's like, if I'm going to do all this work to grow all these generations after I do the double swab or whatever, I don't want to waste my time growing. Like I want more fruit, but I've got a lot of fruit. So if I'm going to try to do this, I want to do it and make sure it's successful. Yeah. Instead of just doing this over and over and over and over again and getting the same thing. And I think that's why, that's why I went to monos because I would rather confirm at the beginning of the process that it's a mono then two months later after my third run Fruit, yeah. like i it's just disappointing to me if if like i do all this work and i find out 
a month, two months, three months later that I've been just basically. So maybe you think you do your double swab and you're like, oh, wow, that looks different. That must be successful. But then you realize maybe it was just an environmental thing and it was actually one of your cultigens that it's just a different look. You know, it's just a different right. pheno from one of the same cultigens. That could be like very disappointing. And then, of course, people are going to be like, well, did you do monos? Did you verify it? That's where you get people coming in and charging you 500 bucks to verify your cross. Right. That's the other thing. If you have two monos and six months later, some assholes like you need to verify it. You'll be like, look, motherfucker, here's mono one, mono two. That's all I need to verify. Right. Fuck off. Like, there's my mom. There's your verification, dude. Like, I don't need your, your ISSR. You don't, you don't, want, your a fucking stamp of a, you don't want a stamp of approval? No, I don't oh, need that. Okay. All right. You don't need that. <laughs> I, I yes. heard a quote the other day that I thought of you. It's like, um, it might have been, it's like, um, like, why ask for an invitation to the table when you can build oh, yeah. the table? Oh, yeah, it was me. Yeah, well, don't wait for a seat at the table. Just build your own fucking table. Yeah, yeah that's definitely where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. There are some tables. You know what? Don't don't try too hard to be at those tables. Those might not yeah, be the tables you want to be at anyway. And sometimes you get to those nice tables and you're dinner. like, wow, this food is not that great. Exactly. Don't need to be here, I guess. Yeah, why did I try so hard to get here? Like, yeah. this sucks. Yeah, we're I'm I'm building the table. You're building the table. Yep. Yeah, Everybody's, build a whole new fucking house. Yep. Just <laughs> don't need don't need other tables. That's why I think they're do. This is I mean, not to sound like a little bit exaggerated, but this is like going to be a paradigm shift. Oh, yeah. In my college because we're taking the like all of this shit that's been happening for the 20 or 30 years, it's all this power that people have had is being stripped away. And that's why they don't like it. People that are, have been kind of monopolizing this sort of technology, if you want to call it that, they hate it. They hate it. Yo, because that's like person, speaking. I brought up magicians earlier, which I've never brought up to my knowledge. <laughs> um, that was like the Penn and Teller thing, right? They did the show showing how they did their tricks. Oh, God, and, yeah. uh, now there are YouTube videos where magicians show how they do all their tricks. Uh, a lot of old school magicians were like crapping their drawers over that shit. Dude. Uh, they they yeah. were not cool with that because. Mm-hmm. Their little magic thing went away. And now yeah, now there's now lady be... Eek. Yeah, Ekaterina. There's a woman on one of my Facebooks or something. She tells, it shows you exactly how to do all that sleight of hand stuff. And yeah, yeah I'm sure she gets death threats. <laughs> yeah, speaking of our, I forget who was I just talking about modernism versus postmodernism. That's a great example, right? The modernist does the trick, and you go, oh. You know it's not real, but you you want to just like live in in the mystery. And postmodernism is more about like, oh, that's how you do that trick. Oh, that's cool. The the ooh and the ah is more about the reveal of how it's done than just the reveal of the you know my assistant's not in the cage anymore. Mm. Yeah, it's just a different era we're going through. Well, man, you know, I didn't even realize. You know, I got my TTBVI fruit. I'm gonna have some <clears throat> pan monos. Nice. <laughs> That's going to be because I've got a bunch of di. I've got probably eight uh, pan dicarions that I haven't been able to fruit just because they're on the back burner. And I got my TTBVI and now I have there's another that's going to be the first got nice. monos. I don't know how well you guys can see it. little things. I'm going to get in there yeah. with my little 11 and I'm going to pull some of those. So I'm going to start doing diamonds with my other. Like, so I'm going to take my dicarians and my pans and mix it with the TTBVI mono and then try to grow those out and see what the hell. All right, Ed, what do you got to say about this one? Uh, hold on, not that one. I never had a pan mono. That's going to be a whole new realm of shit. <laughs> Here we go. What agar, do you change your agar recipe for monos? No, nah, I never change. I use the same exact recipe um, for everything. Literally, the only thing I do is I change the color because if a batch goes bad, if I see like, oh, there's one b- bad blue plate, I'll check all the other blue plates. It's always like this one. I put mica in it. <laughs> right. This one is I did. I don't really care. I don't change it. No, this is the same exact recipe. If you have a preferred recipe for your dicarions, use exactly the same recipe yeah. for your monos. There's no difference. They grow the yeah. same, same LC recipe, same everything, now, everything. I- I exactly will say, Ed, that's because you're using grab and drag. 
I did before the grab and drag, I did find that I had success with a wetter gel and gum. They germinated more rapidly because they liked a wetter plate. But your technique, oh, yeah. what's so great about your technique, and maybe we should revisit it. Um, he's done at least two videos on it. We've talked about it on this show several times. But the difference is you're taking a tuft of the swab with a sterile set of tweezers, mm. and you're just dragging it through the plate. Now, Ed, I don't do the snake anymore. I now start outside and work in. Um, Why? I don't know. I just find it cuts up things. The changing direction, yeah. I would have snag my agar sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. The other thing I do is I, I, so, when I'm doing pour, some of my plates of every jar, I'll pour a little bit thicker because the for me, the grab and drag likes a thicker plate. Yeah, it's definitely... So, so I, I, but I think I'm thinking her question was, should you use different growth media for your dicarion versus your mono when you're selecting? Yes, you should use like use whatever you're comfortable with. But if I think she might be talking about, should I grow monos on a different media? No. Yes, that's what. She, I but that's for what she isolating said. and selecting, it's like like for picking them. It's just a purely physical thing. <clears throat> yeah, generally like harder media is a little bit easier to pick them off. But I, I'm pretty sure she means do monos need like a special media? And then no, they don't. No, MEA, yeah. PDA, whatever. I use my um, agar, uh, my rice water now. Man, I uh, <clears throat> the more I learn about agar and agar work, the simpler it gets. Yes. <laughs> another one of those things people made it Ooh, way too boy. fucking complicated man how you know, i boil my rice gonna do <laughs> it's, it's the only way people could like make their mark on mycology about 10 years ago was to come up with a new media recipe yeah. right like and everybody wants the name so it's like oh it's like bob's uh m y p d f b y media it's like, oh, this is the super ropey media. And, and then you realize after a while, like, why do I care so much about rhizomorphic ropes? Like, this doesn't, like you were saying, like, thick swabs. It's silly. Yeah. Thick LC. You know what thick Extra LC does? Extra help in a spores, Ed. We're getting the X. You get with my swabs, you get an extra thick portion of swabs. <laughs> I've heard literally, like, that's the way people advertise them. Like, you get, look, it's like double the number of spores on my swab. Look at the competitor. It's like you're missing the point, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Like, and, you don't man, realize. This is the other thing. I forget who I was talking to about this, but. If you got somebody hawking genetics and they're talking about their agar recipes better than everybody else's, and that's why you should mm -hmm. buy their genetics, I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. I got genetics that on a standard, you know, malt extract plate with, with no yeast or whatever grows a certain way. Not super ropey, but, you know, attractive, clean mycelium. I can put it on a, a nutrient deficient plate. So instead of, say, 15 or 20 grams of a sugar source, I go down to 10. It'll throw ropes. Well, if I'm selling plates hmm. and everybody likes the pretty ropes, that's what I'm going to do. But it's the same nuclei that are inhabiting yes. these hyphae. It's exactly. It doesn't it's fucking matter, guys. Same it genome. doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Same exactly. DNA. Like I said, when I moved the lab, I subbed everything on a low nutrient meter so it would grow slowly. Cause I didn't know when I was going to get back to it. And now I'm putting things on like normal media and yes, yeah, something that looked like I'm like damn near close to thinking like that might be contaminated. And I put it on like new fresh media and bam, straight back to it. Yeah. A lot of times when you pull liquid culture too, especially if it's old, you put it on media, it'll look funny for about one or two transfers. And then usually by the third one, it's like adapting. It's like remembering or whatever it's, or you have them um, where they're perfect. For example, I had a max squat culture I got from my uh, buddy Luda. Shout out to Luda. He's a phenomenal grower. He's in my Discord. He's just getting back into things. He's over like British Columbia area. Um, he uh, So I had this max squat. Almost all the time it looks just beautiful on a plate. 
And then about every like maybe five transfers, it'll just look weird for a minute. <laughs> and then it'll go back to looking good again. I, I don't even have to change the media man, but... type. So yeah. don't overthink what that shit looks like. You want it just to look like mycelium. If yes. you, you need to be able yes. to differentiate molds, penicillins, yeah. uh, um, uh, penicilliums, uh, no colors. You, you, you definitely, <laughs> unless you're growing some weird exotic psilocybes, you don't want coloration to it. Mm -hmm. You just need to be able to identify clean mycelium. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's tomatose. I mean, just for an experiment, if you guys are all just playing uh, and you bought too much stuff for your agar game, pour a few plates with 30 grams of, you know, whatever you use, malt or sorghum or whatever you use. Pour some 30 gram per liter plates, pour some 10 gram per liter plates, pour some 20 mm. gram per liter, do some transfers and just watch what it does. The, yeah. the minute the mycelium gets a lot of sugar, it's happy. It doesn't need to travel as far. It mm. slows down. It goes tomatose. The, the low newt plates, they're going to travel. They, they're going, mm, I don't know how much longer the sugar is going to last here. We better go look for some more. You're just fucking with the, the morphology of the mycelium by changing the nutrition. Yeah, it doesn't that's matter. That's all it is. And as long as it's clean, it doesn't matter. I literally, like, sometimes I've got my little pile of ingredients. Sometimes I just go in there and I'm like, I'm going to try that this time. Yeah. You got to switch it up. It's like old school advice because they get, um, you know, they get used to a certain sugar or a certain media preparation and then they get, like, kind of lazy. You want to keep lazy keep messing them up you just want to keep fucking with them it's like athletes training you know yes you just got to keep them on their toes it's like and, and it's also it's fun it's fun to see like it kind of fucks with yourself it's like when you see like high nutrient plates and you're like fuck everything went tome and toast what did i do and then like next time you see it on normal media and you're like oh whew. yeah i was freaking out for like three weeks there but then you're like okay maybe i need to be more confident like maybe the morphological look of that plate, I shouldn't lose sleep over that. <laughs> nope. Now I will yeah. say, if you start getting wet bubble, you can spot it. The better the, I still get it in my plate from time to time. That's probably the only thing that I deal with. I always deal with it just on agar. I just toss it when I get it. But it does change the morphology it changes the leading edge profile of the mycelium you'll start to figure that stuff out but the only time and i do the same thing dude i'm back to pretty much one recipe almost all the time but you probably should occasionally pour some water agar plates although with the trenching technique you don't even have to use the water agar plates half the time because you can just I got something that's contaminated do a trench let it hop the trench you probably cleaned it up if if you want to go from that trench growth to a water agar plate let that grow out till it's the size of a half dollar and then take a transfer you, it's probably clean like you don't this is so funny to me that so like the fact that people use the same recipe over and over it seems kind of contrary to what what kind of people that we, would be in the community i would think people would be very like fafo and want to try something different all the oh, time oh they do i think i think they oh they do. do okay yeah but and all i do i don't change my recipe i will change my sugar source maybe every three oh. pours, every three batches oh. so i'll go between sorghum to malt extract or sorghum to oh, um okay. you know potato okay. dextrose or something like that but no my the core recipe I don't really mess with it too much, but so I do what you say. You mean? Yeah, every once in a while, just to you know, like you say, keep them on their toes a little bit. Yeah, change up mm. a little something, something. But I'm not doing it in some eternal quest for quote the ultimate agar recipe. Oh no! <laughs> so no, dumb. when I pour plates, it's very practical. I just need to subculture plates, or I make spawn, and I, when I'm doing spawn, I always subculture to a new plate. It's very, very practical for me yeah. i have no uh desire to like have i've seen enough pretty plates in my life i don't really care anymore if i get it <laughs> i like it i still like it 
right? I'm married. Yeah. See, I've poured like hundreds of thousands and seen hundreds of thousands of plates. Right. It gets old. like I don't even know. Speaking in numbers, I don't know if people can really conceive of like how many egg or plates I've seen in my life and poured. Oh, I can't. Imagine. It's like it's like incredible. I don't even want to think about it. But yeah, it gets a little, especially oh, that goes back to the mono. Thing. you know to be I'm, i was doing when i uh was in school we we made monos because we needed to make mating grids so you may have heard you know bipolar tetrapolar or right. unifactorial bifactorial there's the mating system with the alleles and in order to determine that like back in the day when we kind of thought there was like two mating alleles <laughs> um to figure out if it's bipolar or tetrapolar which is unique to that species you have to make like we use 12 monos so I would make 12 monos of each collection and then put them on a mating grid. And from the, whether they create cross or when not, they whether they make not, clamps. Yeah. yeah. You can kind of decipher like if it's a bipolar or tetrapolar, it's an old, old technique. Nobody really does it anymore, but it was like a taxonomic character back in the day. Hmm. Like if you were going to unite a genus, like generally like, Oh, like Lentinus or Psilocybe, like they all should be tetrapolar. So if you found one that was like bipolar, I mean, this was way before DNA sequencing and all this shit. It was just the old school thing that people right. did, like like their mating system. It's something you will still see listed in like the description of a species. If they've done culture work, like in a paper, in a paper, they will say like, oh, it's a bipolar, um, which is kind of fucked up because now we have like things that only produce two spores per, you know, basidia and things like that. It gets messy real quick, but. Yeah, that was the old school way to do one um, other taxonomic character. We uh, so I, I I took a couple notes here. I wanted to bring up something, and this is in relation to um, this little mutant grow along I'm doing. I forget who I was talking to, um, but they they said something like, "Well, how are you doing the Enigma? How are you selling Enigma?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, I'm not. We're selling." numa omni and tattoo and we are gifting Ugh. enigma and then somebody says well that's not how it's supposed to go you aren't supposed to ask for it you're supposed to just get given it and at that point i said you want to show i mean i've had michael mama angela on and i've heard jick fibs talk about it and i i like i'm gonna tell you right now i've talked to all these big controversial situations i've heard both sides from people or i've roughly heard both sides and uh some of it becomes folklore yeah um, that's like what i'm wondering too. And, and and here's what i'm really wondering is i mean for a while we were running an ethics segment on the show because every day countless people are getting fucked by people in this community mm. and yet <laughs> i mean We'll, you know, we'll make up agar recipes and say ours is the best. We'll steal a genetic and change its name. We'll do all these different unscrupulous things. Uh, but we won't, we won't sell Enigma. That's, that's where we draw the line. Somehow it's like just the one, one yeah. sin we won't commit. For I mean, some people have definitely committed that sin. I think it's fascinating how in yeah i don't know who makes these rules like i don't know there seems to be a certain like level of person like or type of person i should say that like figures that they somehow have been granted the authority to make rules for the rest of right. people i don't know what well no so <laughs> so at least with 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 enigma right there somebody sourced somebody else uh some swabs and then the work that other breeder did with it resulted right in in enigma and there was a controversy of who owns it who should get money from it blah 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 this happened with gandalf as well there's been a few of them that this has happened with and so the solution to these stalemates is always just well I'll just gift it it's it's not happened a bunch but right a couple of these have, have been this way I think mm -hmm. I'm inclined at this point to just be like, but originally everybody wanted to make money off these anyway. And it was only because they couldn't come to an agreement of how to split the money that they were like, well, fine, if I can't make money and you can't make money, then nobody's making money off this. 
what I can't get is how this is the one sticking point, right? People are changing the name of genetics all the time. People are, quote, stealing people's genetics all the time. People are trying to literally harass other people when they, I dude, I hear the stories. There are people that are doing some nasty ass shit if you start selling their stuff. So why do we, we break all these rules, but that's this one holy grail rule that we won't break. I'm just, it's just interesting to me, the, the, this phenomenon of this one, one thing that most people seem to honor while happily breaking many other little, you know, ethical lines. Well, it's, it's virtue signaling. I hate to say it. I mean, a lot of people yeah. seem to be really, really obsessed with the, their virtue signaling. And I don't know why. Um, like a lot of times, I think 99% of the community really, really doesn't give a shit. Like the people out there, like if you're if you're an 18 year old kid and you want to buy LC of Enigma, I don't really see a huge fucking problem with it. I don't quite understand what the big deal is. Like you're inhibiting new growers. Like nobody's, you're just, you're basically, I don't know. Again, it's one of those weird things. It's like, why do certain people feel, I'm not even talking about Enigma. I mean, in yeah. general, mm -hmm. these people who believe they somehow been like nominated the fucking gatekeepers or the, the rule makers of the community. I don't understand who made them the rule makers. Uh, like, do they think? they're somehow like better self-appointed i don't understand i know and i don't understand why we really even give a shit sometimes about some of those people <laughs> like yeah. like i don't i don't really understand i don't understand a lot of things that's why like i know like um you know my i don't have a name my name is made up or whatever dude get that fucking lc crank it into a 500 mil fresh batch and fucking give that to everybody like yeah. make your own business but Here's the thing. It's like, if you can't, I mean, I would be fairly obvious, like it was from me, but you know, whatever, man, you know, make your own decisions. If you want to resell it, fuck. I know that's going to happen. I don't of really course, give a shit yeah. at this point. I don't, I don't really care. Like, just don't sell some contaminated shit that you're calling the same thing. Right. <laughs> or I'm, I mean, I think my main sticking point is just the, just don't change the name if it's not different yeah so why are you doing that well see the interesting I things that i'm thinking like a year from now there's gonna be like oh there's gonna be like 15 different monos of like oh was that the shot key mono three or is that shot key mono eight that's what's gonna happen if i have to do it oh. all by myself oh, it'll be you... like because i literally i did that with an albino avery's i had two albino avery uh or avery's albino uh, monos and i mated them with something else and the two phenos that popped out were, were different like yeah. different monos will give you and i remember dave oh, yeah. saying this like not all monos are created equal oh, so God, you can no. get multiple monos from the same cultigen yeah so this is where things are going to get real real interesting because like that mono that tote mono one that's not the same as I've got five more toke monos out there. Right. And I've got six Alabama and another five Natal Super Strain. And like, like, like this is gonna get real interesting yeah. real quick. <laughs> yeah, people will be like, oh, you have toke M1. I have toke M6. I know. It could be. It's great. It could be, it's man, great. like in a year. And then we'll be back to the labeling shit again. You know, somebody's yeah. going to forget what M it is. It's like, was that Mono 1 or Mono 6? Of like, course oh. we're going to. We know how the game of telephone goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, it'll be all the same problem, but that's okay. Man, I, so I was driving home from taking my kids to their little gymnastics class tonight, and it, something popped into my head. It was like, People rename stuff because there's a point where they don't want to give credit anymore. It gets yeah. to be a drag. It, it, it doesn't, right? They want to hype themselves up. So, for example, let's say Ed sends me something he just crossed, and I like it. Well, if I keep giving Ed credit in my head, then especially if I sell genetics in my head, I'm going, I can't give Ed credit because then people are going to keep wanting to buy Ed shit. I got to change the name. Now it's mine. Now they want my shit. 
that's why I gave the, up. That's what's going on. See, that's why I gave up on last year. That's why I started doing Mon Mon stuff because I'm like, nobody yeah. can ever say so I they've know. done this. And I don't put new names on them. And I tell I told there's a one guy he asked me if he could name something. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. I don't really care. Dude, I'm so pat. This is literally what I've been doing. I did for my my PhD and what I've been doing or thinking about for 20, 30 years. These names they become kind of irrelevant in the grander scheme thing of yeah. things like a, a wild edible. You might know it as Boletus edulis, but then you look and now it's, oh, it's pulvero Boletus uh, rubridrum or whatever. And you're like, I thought that was a sep. I've been eating it for 30 years. And all of a sudden you see it's got a new name, but you know what it is. Right. But it's, uh, it's a little bit frustrating, but it's like you just got to like deal with it. It's never going away. Never. And there's going to be people that like counter. It's like counterfeits. I'm sure Rolex gets fucking steamed. And, you know, Gucci gets steamed about like that. You come to Asia, I can go out and buy a Rolex for like 25 bucks, you know, and like unless you're a watchmaker or something or jeweler, like you don't know the difference. Pretty, pretty I'm hard sure to tell unless you that. crack it open and look inside. Yeah. And know yeah. And even then, for. you know, it's like, does it really? I don't know. So if there's anybody out there, one I like, I am not worried about people even like stealing my shit. In fact, I'd encourage it. Like, yeah, every time I send out a mono or anything, if I like people buy my crosses, I don't give them a name. Like, you know, it's like a albino hotla times and that or whatever. Like, I don't give it a name because I'm not very creative. And like other people, if they want to name it, go ahead. If you feel the need to put a name on something, go for it. I'd like kind of like i think it strips some of the information that for me is the real danger is that when people rename things it strips all the lineages right. like right. it's like weed strains you know like purple coconut pineapple crunch berries yeah. like is that a sativa or an indica like i don't fucking know right. i and how will i ever know so for me coming you know more like scientific standpoint novel names that have no relevance to their lineage is kind of like a danger for me but for other people i don't know if they want to name it fuck i've had hundreds of thousands of fish probably i never named a single one right i had an oscar that was this big for five years never had a name it was the fish it's a fish yeah but some people like giving their fucking hamsters oh, names. Shit. Hamsters. Then, then they own it. And if they name it, they own it. Is that it? it? Damn it. Yeah, it's a very egotistical thing. Yeah. But like somebody I was talking about, uh, somebody earlier, I forgot. Oh, like, I think it was Jeff at the very beginning. It might have even been like, he said, we're going to make more. Like, I don't know, man. Name that thing next month, next year. There's yeah. going to be thousands. Yeah thousands of new things so i don't know if you want to name it go for it but it's not really a big deal to me i don't know right. if somebody wants to name something go for it man somebody um uh, i think she goes by michael dandy um she's a lady been doing some solid growing recently uh, she's on my server she supports me on patreon i see her on facebook and she just did a tub of like albino jmf uh avery's albino albino something or other jack frost and she they're all done about the same time and some people commented oh they all look the same and then other people commented oh no no this this one the cap's flat and this one's a larger diameter cap and and this and yeah. and i'm like there you go that's just you know this is people some people look yeah. and they go that's all the fucking same and other people go dear god these are all magnificently different Right. so yeah. yeah little subtleties so, real, a lot of the environmental stuff too you know i mean i think new people don't realize like how much just like your substrate moisture level can affect the fruit morphology yeah it's like ridiculous man things in your first second third flush man fruit look way different like the second flush oftentimes in my shoe boxes i'll get really really dense and they they kind of like abort or whatever because there's not enough moisture. But when I I'll just now I just go and rip them off and I'll take a yep. fork. But the second flush, that's where I'll get some single fruits, and that's where I get really really nice fruit and good spore yep. swaps because the oh, caps yeah. are more open. Maybe there's more air, and I've already depleted some of the nutrient in the in the media there, the substrate. So you know the grains kind of. 
maybe it's getting tired, but if you're getting spores, you only need like a couple fruit. You know? Right. I'd rather have one huge fruit with wide gill gap yeah. than I would 30 yeah. tiny little fruits. Yes. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass swabbing those things and you're never, yeah, having those nice open gills where you can just like get in there and shoot one time in, one time out. It's like, oh, that makes your life so much easier. Oh, yeah. So speaking of that, for like the double swabbing, right, what you really don't want is gill tissue. So you can't have a delicate (laughs) enough touch on these. So this is why, honestly, right, if you got to check if you're doing yeah. an albino with a pigmented fruit to cross to like, you know, hope that you can kind of check paternity or whatever, cause they're so different. I mean, there would be a lot of albino spores on there. Cause you, you do not want to have to crank into there. And some of them, uh, if mm. you look on albinos, I see a lot of the albinos got a lot of spores right on the edge. So you don't even necessarily have to get in between them. A light graze across one, yeah. a light graze across the other. Assuming you got those lined up, that might be all you got to do. Yeah, you get, or you just get lucky. That's, I don't, yeah. the double swabbing thing, it just makes me way too, there's so much left to chance that I don't, I don't know the amount of work when you start doing this and you realize how much work you're going to do. Yeah. To try to grow that collagen, like I just, I kind of don't want to wait. It's not a I'm waste again because you get fruit, but I'd rather do. I like doing agar work. That's the thing. A lot of people, I think, one of the things that maybe prevents people is the agar work. If you don't know how to do agar, you're not going to do monmon crosses unless you get liquid culture in a tube, which is why I started selling it. A lot of people bitching about like, oh, it's too expensive. It's like, yeah, but once you have that. You, you can make more. You can share it with your friends. You can do right. like do diamonds with 20 cultigens. So instead of just being like, I can't do any breeding because I don't have a mono, like now you can. And I've been doing, you just shoot like maybe one or two cc's in your, in your dicarion bag. You know, so you take your bag, you chop the top off like I do or your jar or whatever. You throw your piece of dicarion agar in there. And you just squirt two cc's of the the monoculture monocarion the monocarion yeah. lc in there and job done yeah. so it's like it's like taking all the that's what like when i explain this to non-myco people they're like oh you you're just making it easier and that's exactly it i'm right. trying to make it easier because i know once those people see the results of their diamond cross the first fucking thing they're going to do is like I need to go buy a $250 AM scope. Yep. So instead 100%. of paying this asshole Ed fucking 125 bucks, how about I do this myself for free? Right. Like, well, not free. I just to buy the shit, but you know, literally like, it's like, if you're like, I'll be honest. If you're too fucking lazy to grow your own weed, you go to the store and buy it. Yeah. Right. I don't understand this concept. I don't People grow don't my understand. own weed, Ed. Yeah, exactly. I buy bread. You can't right. go to, I don't this fry is... donuts in the morning. Like, why the yes. fuck? I don't understand why people have a big issue with, like, you're giving a product that other people are too lazy or don't have the time it's or maybe even lives. money or technique to do. You're I like, don't care I don't if have a off. fucking donut fryer. Yes. That's why I go to Dunkin' Donuts. Like, it's a lot easier than buying a fucking fryer and making my donuts every morning yeah. when I can just go buy them. <laughs> yep. You can be, I mean, I, I had this guy that just kept ripping into people. He, th- he thought, <coughs> thought he had to do, <coughs> excuse me. He thought he had to do, you had to do everything. You had to do everything. If you didn't do everything, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, did you build your own house? Yeah, exactly. Your car. Oh, oh, you did. did Sell you your own form, clothes. Did you form your own cinder blocks? Did you pulverize the rock that went into your concrete? Get the fuck out of here. Shut oh, up. No. I don't you know what. You can't do everything. No one can. There yeah. Are, at some point, we don't live in the woods in Papua New Guinea. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not like a primitive tribe anymore. No one is doing everything. If somebody actually makes something from raw materials, I, I used to build furniture from raw lumber, mm-hmm. but I didn't go cut the trees down. Yeah. Right? 
I still didn't do that. So this whole logic of like, you got to do everything yourself. Shh, no, you it's don't, weird. whoever is saying that you don't do everything yourself. You cook every meal, you grow all your own food. Yeah, exactly. You only eat meat from uh, animals that, that you've, you know, taken care of and grown and just no, you don't do that. I have people are stuck back and they think these like colonial times or whatever. I mean, just like this mouse, like, I don't know how the fuck to make a mouse. Oh, Ed, you didn't make your own mouse. <laughs> no, you I don't have a, a clue. Ed, you bought a stir plate. You didn't make it out of a computer I... fan. Ed, what's your problem, dude? I know exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, even like something like hoods, it's like, oh. man, you know, like hoods are getting down where like, I don't even know if it's really worthwhile to do it. I made my own DIY hood. I got a $200 HEPA filter. I got a squirrel cage blower. I got the caulk gun. I got the fucking marine grade plywood, blah, 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 blah. blah. And at the end, it ended up costing me more. And I like or more same price. And it it was not really as good as the commercially available thing would have been. Ever recommend anybody build their own. Now I say if you got a lot of shelf space, and you know there are guys that that build them. My buddy Cougar, he builds amazing flow hoods. That if you got the space for the deep plenum, right? That he's got mm-hmm. the it's the true you know laminar flow. They're real nice. They're real cool. If you got the space for that and you want a nice quality product, buy it. Yeah. Most exactly. people don't have the space, and nobody wants a project. I don't care who you are. I don't care how broke you are. This is the problem. When you're broke, you go, I don't have any money. So I guess all I got is time. Hmm. And I used to do this. And then I was like, man, just because you don't have any money and you think, well, I got more money than, t- or I got more time than money. You don't got any more time than anybody else. So you also maybe got to start thinking about you can't do everything. Mm-hmm. Right. Did I? Yeah. And could you spend that time doing something better that you could make money doing? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like DIY stuff, but you got to prioritize and you literally only have a certain amount of time in a day. And so if you're going to spend that inefficiently, like you have to prioritize it and, and, uh, you know, even maybe delegate some things to like other people, like, like, let's see, instead of spending two or three months fucking doing, buying a scope and doing all this mono shit, like, how about I just get Ed some, Ed some money? He'll fucking make more. That's way yeah. easier. Like, yeah, I can just shoot do this. That. Yeah. But some yeah, people like, need that for a taste, right? Some people won't go oh. skydiving until they go to Vegas and go in the little floaty thing that simulates it, right? Some people won't scuba dive till they do the little snooba trial. It's okay. Some sometimes you need to figure out whether you like a thing, right? Without spending, yeah, that's... like it's cool. I never, I always qualify people when they say I'm new to growing. I want to start growing. What should I do? I say, do you just want fruit? Are you very fat or are you very yeah, in, interested in the cultivation aspects of this? And they go, I just need fruit. Cool, buy some spawn and some sub. Just uh, it, I can make this super mm. easy for you. For under a hundred bucks, you're gonna yeah. get five hundred, six hundred dollars worth of fruit. You can do that whenever you need to. Now you've completely controlled your own production of mushrooms. You're you're good. If they say, I don't know, I think I might like the cultivation. All right, cool. Well, go buy a Presto. Go buy a pressure cooker. Step one. Mm. Right. You just got to figure out why people are into it. Some people have money. And are gonna go 125 bucks. Cool. Yeah, this might be fun. Let's see if this is neat. Yeah. If they oh, like it, great. You know, there's another thing that I I mean I've noticed from like being on line selling. There is a huge amount of people in the world that we have no contact with. Like we think we know everybody in the micro community. Oh the orders I get are from places that are not even on our radar at all like oh yeah there's american communities to be very... we don't even know about yes oh yeah every american yeah. tends to think like everything important in the world happens in america there's a whole right. other world like 90 what is it like 97 percent of the people in the world like don't live in america right like, i don't know that's something like that over 90 percent, and people like forget about that because everybody's online in america and we have right. you know this like podcast and whatnot 
But there's dudes in like Saudi Arabia doing stuff and like yeah. all over Australia, like you're saying, we don't we don't really like think about these people because they're not we don't see them every day. And so you just don't. but there's people doing all kinds of wacky stuff in other places that are not America. <laughs> That's like when you tell a white person that only 11 percent of the population on Earth is white and they're like, what? <laughs> 90% of the planet oh, is not white. Oh, man, all, all, the, all the freaking whiteies moved into town here last week because the college is opening. It opened yeah. yesterday, and Jesus, I never seen so many foreigners in my little area. It's like, wow, everybody so looks, uh oh, this is going to sound mean, but they they all, there's a like college kids. It's like, wow, everybody looks really old and fat. Oh, it's we're like, plump wow, over the here, Americans dude. came into town. Like, look how fat everybody is. Food, like, you're like, is cheap dude, there's here, these dude. girls walking around with the muffin tops. It's like, girl, can you not, like, you're not a skinny Thai girl. Like, she, I saw a girl last night, literally had like rolls hang. She had like basically a bikini on, and like, and there was like, it's like, girl, that looks, I'm sorry, that looks gross. It looks really kind of gross. Like, I don't really want to see that. Like I know you're positive. I got another channel for you, Ed, that. fashion channel. You got to do a fashion channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, I don't know. I I agree with you. Like, but right, men, we buy clothes that fit us. We don't really look at the size. The ladies <laughs> don't do that. They, you know, they go. I'm well, a size I thought 12. they used to, but now it's like they're flaunting it. Like, look how fat I am now. Oh, I don't even like I'm going to show that. everybody how much of a good body image I have. And it's like kind of gross. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know I, I'm I'm a little fat sometimes, too, but it's like it's gone a little bit. Like we're exporting sure. because I the Thai people are getting fat now, too. We're exporting all that shit. Donuts, fast food, processed things like there is now six, seven, elevens on my street. That's probably about uh, maybe about a third of a mile long. There's five 7-Elevens on it. Like with, it's, it's all crazy. over now. It's all it's over. It's everywhere. Five 7-Elevens. You're done. Collapse. Yeah. Oh, it's there's a, a McDonald's on the corner. And this is a small little town that I lived in. It's a college town. But we have exported our obesity epidemic to the rest of the world. Oh, yeah. Like, it's crazy. It is, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, back to mushrooms, maybe. Yeah, man. I'll probably that's capitalism right there. People. That's capitalism. Yeah, that's what it is. Every food addictive as fuck. Oh, yeah. Yes. And they succeed exactly. at it. Yeah. All those ribonucleotides. They don't even put just straight MSG and shit anymore. It's like no. ribonucleotides, ATP, and I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? I didn't. When did they start putting this shit in food? Not <laughs> even like dinucleotide triphosphates. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. This is what I used to put in my PCR reactions. Not, not like crisps or chips from the store. We're, like, we're, oh, we're juiced up with all sorts of stuff. Because if we're all healthy, there's they're leaving money on the table, Ed. They got to get as yeah. sick as possible well, you, you and then guys, sell uh, drugs. Job security, man. They, like People are just going to get more and more sick. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They're, they're going to walk more. that fine line between sort of enjoying your life sort of able mm. to do stuff but chronically prescribed yeah that well okay. that's exactly what they want but then now on the flip side i got a problem with a lot of this new age crap i've seen these like chiropractors pretending to be doctors on instagram like talking about uh medical advice and i'm like well, that's flat out like false science that's the opposite mm -hmm. of the truth and this one guy a message i was like well okay you might want to google these terms here so you understand like different osmotic pressures and different vessels of the body because you're getting it backwards buddy i didn't say it like that i was trying to be nice but he he had like 15 people message me in my dms attacking me like that's uh, your truth that's not his truth what yeah I mean, like no that that's don't. the thing i i, I think we just got to kind of sometimes provide truth and let other people digest it yeah. I, I don't know, like the people that say literally like I've heard people saying like the grab and drag doesn't work. Like I've actually had people come and say that they've been saying that, oh, it's grab and drag doesn't work. And it's like it's not if they just said the grab and drag, but somehow it got associated with me for better or worse or whatever. And right. Like they're just like saying it doesn't work and it clearly works. 
I've got five plates right there that I'm going to go right. isolate mono. That was like, I did that in like 45 minutes. And now I'm going to spend probably the next six months sorting it out. But like, I don't understand why people listen to other people sometimes that like, why don't you just try it? It takes one plate and a spore swab and like a $2 tweezers from the cosmetics aisle. Right. Like, why don't you just try it? Why are you listening to other people? Like those videos have been, you know, the thing is I didn't, I really didn't think about selling um, like mono carry on culture, liquid culture, because when I put those videos up on YouTube, like eight months ago, I'm like, wow, everybody's going to do this now. Like I never you foresaw. You underappreciated the laziness of people, Ed. I know I did. Yeah. I was like, I, you know, I was still back in the day when, you know, everybody was like gatekeeping and we're like, we got to keep our little secrets. <laughs> like don't tell anybody how you got that mono i was literally thinking like man maybe if i put this up on the like everybody's gonna know how to do this and then like i don't know i'm gonna i like everybody's i'm gonna be irrelevant you know like and then it's like well i guess not like maybe people it's like yeah. you the videos are still there if you want to make mono carry-ons you do a grab and drag and it's like really, really pretty straightforward. It's all work, Ed. That's like, what is speaking of quotes since we're on a quote kick? What's the one uh, opportunity? Most people miss opportunity because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. People are quite lazy these days. I forgot. Right. I forget about I that. mean, our culture, everything in our whole system is breeding it. It's like almost not mm. even people's fault. I, I could, to be fair, you know, I, I had my motorcycle oil change last week. I could do it. It's a little plug on the bottom, but what am I going to do with the used oil? Like, I don't really want to get my hands dirty. Like, I can stop in the shop and pay the dude 20 bucks. But, Ed, you it. already have nitro gloves and we know you're a glove proponent. Yeah, you I could know. totally do that, Ed. Come on. Know, you shouldn't do that yourself, I Ed. Could. You and call yourself a motorcycle rider and you don't the even next change. Two days getting I mean, motor oil under my fingers and wondering why my nuts smell like 10W40. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll let that dude. That dude's already got like hands that look like gorillas. You know, wow. like I, I don't need to like get my hands that dirty. Like I'll I'll pay him like twenty yeah, bucks to do it. Exactly. And he'll do it more efficiently, safely, and probably a hell of a lot faster than I would have ever done it. And I don't need yeah. to buy a fucking oil filter funny wrench thing and all this shit. You, know? you don't want to buy every tool for everything that ever needs yeah, to happen in your life. You exactly. don't want to do that. Yeah, crazy. I mean, that I understand the DIY component, but I'd rather choose um that you spend my time doing other things. Yeah. Than... Hey man, so I can do just about all the trades. I'm pretty good. And I can tell you the one that uh, my first job when I was growing up was as a mason tender. So I moved all the center block around. I moved like bags of concrete. I, I just moved heavy shit around. It was an awful, awful job. So when I became a contractor and I was working my way up and I was learning all the skills, let me tell you the one trade I didn't want anything to do with, and that was foundation work. I didn't want to learn any mason work. I didn't want any of that. Even when I get into tile, and I was like, oh, I didn't want to do outdoor tile work. It just reminds me of foundation work, <laughs> right? You just, we, we I, I, I want the highest skill, the highest risk, the biggest money. Those are all the, the, the trades I learned first. I, well, some things you just don't want to do. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody's like, I really like making spawn. Like, I to be honest, I like making spawn better than I like fruiting mushrooms. <laughs> Though, yeah. you know, it's like, I just like doing it. So luckily, you know, I got a, a friend who she like helps me fruit stuff. And it's like, wow, that's yeah. nice. It's a very like symbiotic relationship. Because like, right. I just want to see the fruit, but I don't really want to grow them. Like, I just want to make the spawn and play with my little crosses and stuff. And, but you know, when you got to do all of it, you're right. It's like, I don't know, some things you'd rather not do, but that's yeah, probably man, why you're you allowed to like things and not like things just like, yeah. like, like you keep saying, um, 
Everybody loves my college. Nobody's getting a PhD. Nobody's getting any degree. And I, I, I have not met a single person in this community who loves my college yeah. enough to go get any degree at any level in it. I so like, okay. Yeah, I, right. I would have. I was just That's talking fine. about this the other night. It's the same thing in other professions, you know, going to that level of education and, and the hell, no the to psychological it, so. torture. Yeah. yeah, It's not worth it. Yeah. No, if you just want, if you just like mushrooms, like there's no real need to go to school to do it, nope. especially now with what's available on the internet and books. Yeah. Like it's kind of a waste. It's a very inefficient way to learn about mycology. Unless you get right. the whole grad program paid for, then, then maybe. Yeah. Then and if you don't got anything it. at that time in my life, I didn't know what I was doing. I was bored and like yeah. I just wanted to live somewhere in a college town because college towns are fun to live in. <laughs> And I just didn't want to have a real job. So I was like, let's go back to school. <laughs> let's see how this works. And, uh, but yeah, unless if you got kids and family or, you know, any other goals in life, I wouldn't bother with the education as far as mycology goes. It doesn't really get you anywhere unless you want to be a professor, you want to uh, publish papers or something. You don't really learn. Like everything I learned in my four years of being a PhD, besides like the kind of practical experiences, like I could tell somebody in probably a couple of days, um, like you could learn how to do monos now. And like, it's, um, you know, you learn it probably in a, in a couple hours. Um, like if you were started from the very, very beginning, it would be very, very probably confusing. And hard, you know, in this dilution, like, you know, all the shit with like the mating alleles. Oh, you got to make sure the pheromone alleles are different. All that stuff. I actually saw a paper the other day that was going, was basically saying all of those things about like the raper and the skyzophilum and the mating alleles and the pheromones. And like, it's all bullshit, which I figured out from experience with the cubes. It's like, if you take two cube spores, there's like almost a hundred percent chance that they will mate with each other. But if you're worried I mean, about tetrapolar mating systems and this is a A1, B1, and that's a A2, B2, like, oh, like, like, nah, that doesn't, it has no relevance anymore. That's when you step back and you just go, well, I just keep putting them on a plate and they keep germinating. Uh, exactly. I'm growing fruit from them. Yeah, so and they grow together. To and that's why I almost, want, I like, like all those other guys you had on about, uh, you know, at the beginning there and. Like, it's good to see other people doing it, too, because for a while I thought I was living in this fucking fantasy world of, like, is this shit really working? Like, I'm, like, the first monos that I had. And I remember first time I sent you some of my crosses and, you know, those, like, you know, not the, the F1 sometimes don't look all that fancy. And you're like, oh, it's like I thought I've been living in this fantasy world of shit. It's like, is this really working? Right. I'm like, I think this is the way it's supposed to work by biology. What I know, I think, it's, and now it gets working. And to see other people doing it, and now it's like, wow, yeah, this is a whole like new movement. That's fucking awesome. It's great, man. It's uh, I we love need to more. See it. We need more boots on the ground. Yeah, boots that's on the yeah, that's. I mean, uh, next year, you, can you imagine how many matings? people are going to do in the next few years it's like um, we just, so that's the thing why rename somebody else's stuff why not just make your own new thing yeah. yep. like you don't need to steal something else or if you're gonna if you're gonna rename it it's gonna not have the uh the like you know the prestige the name the reputation of it the the previous name anyway so it's kind of weird that you would i don't know i just somebody don't else's thing. even it's well, so here's why you want to name something because you come up with a cool name and you go, Oh, that'll sell. Yeah, that exactly. I hate that'll to say sell. it, yeah, but that's you're what it right. Is. I'm telling you, it's all money. It's about like my dad spent his and my entire childhood going, If you don't understand why something's happening, just follow the money. Mm. Just follow the money, man. It's, yeah, it's names are money. really important for people. Like, I, yeah. I can't even imagine, like, people are, like, even their, um, their, like, shop name or their company name or their vendor name, it's, like, really, really important for people. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure why. It's make but or break things. It, that's probably why it could, they you know, if you got a cool make or name. Break it. Yeah. I mean, a cool name is cool. There are definitely bad names. There are definitely tacky names. Hmm. 
My name it's is funny Michael how humans Geeky, exist. and it's not hurt me one bit. So, I mean, it couldn't be more on the nose. They put about three seconds of thought into it. And things are going just fine for me. Why? Because I'm not afraid of work. You guys think yeah. I want to wake up at six in the morning, take care of my kids, go to work, do all the shit that I do. And, and then at nine, when everyone else is chilling out, like you guys are all chilling out. I had to, I had to like frantically scramble every night to make sure all my eyes are dotted and my T's are crossed to put the show on. That's because it's work. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like that. People don't realize. Yeah, I think they're almost like jealous of how much work you do <clears throat> or other, they see somebody else working hard and then it makes them realize like, wow, I'm kind of lazy. And so sure. the easier yeah. way, and instead of them working harder, it's easier for them to just knock you down. Yeah. Oh, dude, like I watch it. My, my 12 and eight year old daughters, um, if one is doing really good at something, the other one immediately has to knock the other one down a peg. Wow, you it just, just... Yeah, it's just human nature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of understand it, too, if you if you see somebody that's doing much better than you and you're like, wow, I should have probably done that. And then it I makes know. you feel a little bit insufficient, you know, like inadequate. You're like, oh, yeah, I probably could have done that, but I didn't. Yeah. Just do it. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah, really, it's back to this thing. I talked to like dichotomous about this too, you know, and a lot of other people about, I, I mean, again, not to be morbid, man, but I got like people that are like dying around me and like are going to die soon. And I don't want to be one of those people that, like in my deathbed sitting in a hospital and I'm, you know when you're taking your last trip to the hospital and you know you're not going home like i don't want to be sitting in that bed thinking like wow i should have did that i should have right. done this I, it's like there is no way i want to be like that man i yeah i get a lot of people that they're like because i live in another country and they're like i want to leave america and i should get out and it's like you can if you if you can do it do it like, but just thinking about it your entire life is, is, I don't know, it's pointless. If you're not going to do something, move on and do something else. Right. But, but also, like, I got friends who, uh, it's always the city they live in is always the problem. And they yeah. just bounce from city to city. And I'm in the back of my head just going, <sighs> wherever you go, there you are, buddy. Mm -hmm. Like the problem ain't the city. How many cities you got to move to exactly. before you realize the problem is not the city? That's yeah. This guy, this American guy, last night we I was sitting there chilling, and he came up about eleven thirty, and within three minutes he was talking about American politics. Well, he sat down with a table with a South African, another British guy, and another American, and me. And within three minutes he was talking about the fucking political election. And it's like, dude, you just sat down with a group of basically four expats who don't live in America and don't give a shit. Right. But for some reason, he's bringing your toxic fucking political conversation to dude, this table. People where in America don't even want to talk about this shit anymore, hardly. I know. It was like, dude, it's... what do you not get about this? We live in another country because we don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, and I don't know. And then it's, it's always like these people, they bring their own problems. It's like, dude, get away from me with your fucking problems. Yes. Like, I don't want your problems. Keep them to yourself. And then it's like he's bitching about his fucking Thai girlfriend and blah, blah, blah. No fucking shit, dude. You've been here for six years and you haven't figured this out. Like, gee, you're going to get fucking swindled by a fucking Thai bar girl. Are you a fucking idiot? Like, I'm sorry. Dude, like, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. The Expat's <laughs> yeah. Guide to uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Oh, there's a thousand of them already. Oh, are there? Okay. There's a bunch of channels, too. There, oh, if you okay. really want to know, there's a couple I can. I don't. I yeah, no they there definitely should be prerequisites before people get here. But now I mean, this guy, he found out I had a YouTube thing, a live stream. And he's like, oh, dude, you got to get me on your live stream. And I'm like, and do. why do people want to listen to you? Yeah. They don't want to listen to another Start 50 year old white dude bitch about. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's do the other it. Thing. You got to just encourage him to do it, man. But that's what I told him. I'm like, dude, you know, like YouTube is free. Like, Go can, for it. You, you can like, yeah, that's the other thing. It's like these all there. There's where the haters come in. And it's like, you know, like YouTube is free, right? <laughs> like, Go for yeah. it.
You know, stream Step yard up to the plate, free. take a swing, guys. Yes. Yeah. Do but it. it's easier to just bitch and complain about everybody. Yeah, else. that's it. It's easier to bitch and complain. But people got to yeah. get over that. I, I mean, strangely enough, I know nobody will ever believe this, but I'm actually a quite shy person. But it takes oh, me a lot tell, to Ed. get. We can tell. It's obvious. <laughs> it takes me a lot sometimes to get over this. And no, I used to be. And I know how those people feel because I used to be like that. And I still, I, I, I let like personal attacks affect me way more than they should. Um, but it's I like, I'm getting over do, it. But what, yeah. What, what, even what, if you tell yourself you, it doesn't, it, it probably does. But a lot of people really, it's probably, um, they're way more shy. They, they think they're, I don't know, inadequacies or whatever, maybe yeah. are deeper in some people than they are. It's, it's like a Thai boxer, right? You want to be a good Thai boxer. Um, you spend half your time just learning how to take hits at first. Those <laughs> kicks to the shin, they hurt like a son of a bitch. You can yeah. break a tibia doing that. But eventually, you start building up some some resiliencies, and they don't hurt as much. Uh, so it's uh, like pretty soon you're just like, oh, you called me what? Oh, wow. I wish I could even like give two shits about that. Like I ain't got time. I'm too busy actually doing something. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Instead of spending time like thinking or worrying about all that shit, just do it. Yeah. Like I think with the YouTube and stuff, people are like afraid like, oh, but what if I make a video and then later it's shit? Yeah, it's going to be shit. Your yeah. first videos are oh. going to be shit. Absolute shit. Sweet and you'll look videos. back like a year later and be like, holy fuck, I should that I should delete that. Yeah, man, I went back and re-edited the audio on that Dave Wombat podcast and I was like, Oh, wow this is yeah. rough this is rough <laughs> it's hard it's hard it's hard because yeah you're worried about your future you know what yeah your political career and everything all that you know but after you've fucked up enough times you kind of like don't really care anymore you're like well <laughs> yep guess i don't need to worry about that anymore <laughs> at all has no impact on me yeah they don't like me oh wow who cares I know what a surprise. Gee, another motherfucker that doesn't like me. Wow, mm -hmm. that's such a novel. You should feel so unique. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's the other thing. Sometimes people like tend to think too highly of themselves, which is funny because I get accused of that, but I don't think highly of myself. That's that's the the strange thing is people don't realize that I actually have a very low self opinion of myself. I'm not very smart. And I really like have a lot of issues to deal with, but I don't know. Again, people project these ideas onto others oh, yeah. that they think like you must be like this because I see your five or 10 minute video. And then they form this big elaborate idea of like, what you're like, you know, and like what you must be and your attitudes and your opinions. And it's like, I don't understand. This is nothing like you get these elaborate fantasies about what like stalkers who think that like you know they're gonna like yeah. be married to that like pop star or, like something yeah. like that it's like ooh, it's just borderline delusional shit <laughs> and again i mean i if people knew how many dms i respond to in a day how many people i talk to and earnestly take the time to give them a, a, a mm. solid response like so the, whatever I'm at over 8,000 subscribers, I earn those. Those didn't, yeah. just, I didn't, nothing went viral for me ever at any point. Those have all been earned one by one because I give a shit about people and I talk to them. I mean, every day somebody goes, wow, you responded to me. So every day I I'm getting feedback that says a lot of people aren't. All right. that's what i thought too yeah just last night i was responding to a guy and i his friend request i didn't accept his friend request because we only had two mutual friends and i'm like i thought it was just a scam or whatever so people don't understand that you know like if you get a friend request on facebook and there's like you only have like three mutual friends yeah there's a lot of scammers right so and then you know it you depends get it, upon you... who the mutual friends are yeah, Th oh, there yeah, are that's... a few. It does, didn't take me long to figure out. There are some that you know they seem to be accepting the friend requests from the pretty girls real quick. So now I'm like, yeah. oh, if that's the first person that shows up, I'm not accepting that <laughs> one. Know. Okay, I about about once a week I go through, and any any person that has a, a like a pretty picture, I just unfriend them. Delete it. Yeah. 
now. Yeah, I even like some boys. There was like some boy last night. I'm like, why is he posting all the only thing on his page is like selfies of him like laying on a bed with a shirt off. I'm like, why is this person my friend? <laughs> well, we know why Ed. He wants to be your friend. Yeah. Anyway, the it. I'll tell you the ones that get me is I'll just get I I'll go on to Facebook a little 10 requests 20 requests i just if there's if we have no friends in common no i do not yeah no i can't you got at that point you gotta message me but and then mm. now if it's just like one or two friends in common and it's some girl in a scantily clad outfit that's definitely a hard pass um anybody with a name i can't pronounce from anywhere in africa no offense to africa but i know what that turns into every time that is a yeah. scam artist and then if you do accept a friend request and within several minutes you get a dm from that person 100 percent guaranteed scam mm -hmm. nobody's that responsive that just wants to be your maybe friend. there's like some underground nigerian myco network that yeah, being where we're like you know we're discounting like maybe <laughs> there's probably some 21 year guy in lagos who's like damn it I need my Michael content and fucking geeky didn't accept my friend request. Well, sometimes I'll get them. They will message me going, why didn't you accept my friend request? And then I know, okay, whoops, sorry. Do you like, you know, do you want to actually be my friend? Great. We'll do that. But well, you're at the mo like doing videos is a kind of becomes a more efficient way sometimes of doing things when you've gotten the same question, like multiple times, it's like maybe just a video, like, and then you can post it. I think we we're talking about earlier, right? Just, like if you just make one video and then you can just send them to there. And a lot of, I, I say a lot of times it's hard to judge what level of interest people really like after this show, I know I'll get 10 people who will be like, Ed, I want to learn how to breed. Can you teach me? Yeah. And then it's my like, videos. yeah. It's then I'll the videos. go and I'll send them videos. And then mm, probably five out of those 10 people I'll never, like, never hear from again. And then maybe Five one out of them, ten. you mean like nine out of 10, probably nine. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. one of them. So you, you know, I'll take the time and find the videos and then send them back and maybe have a little chat and like, yeah, 90% of them. I won't ever hear anything yeah. from them again. So it's what becomes a point where I was like, mm, do I, how much energy am I going to put into this? We're putting the energy in the contents there. If, if yeah, people ask it. me a question and I know it's in, in an episode, I, I just say, go watch the episode with so-and-so if they say i can't find it say look i'm not gonna go look for it for you go look for yeah it. that's a little bit funny to me too yeah like i after a couple hundred hours of videos i'm sorry but i don't have them all cataloged in my head right. <laughs> yeah. and it's like if you do want to learn about mycology maybe that you should just go watch all your videos or i don't know like people want you to like hand feed what they spoon feed them sometimes it's like they a do. little bit yeah straighting yeah but you can usually tell that straight away. And then the like the people who are coming in here, you know, with the weed people, their next big uh, conquest is mushrooms. Of course. So, you know, the people like, hey, bro, I wanted to know if you had any good genetics. I want the fastest one, the strongest one with the biggest yields. Oh, and like, can you like give me a culture of it? It's like, um, yeah, no. Yep. Like they just want, they're like the headhunters of like the, the psychedelic world. They're like, let me go collect all these genetics from every possible person I can and sort it out later. And I don't know. I don't really, really um, want to talk to those people. I don't want to give them an advantage that they, they don't already have like millions of dollars. Yep. 100%. That thing where I think we're all here for the same reason. We're here for the small people, right? I, I don't think. I'm here. Yeah, I have no interest in helping some big pharmaceutical company or whatever no. make the next best product that they're going to sell for millions of dollars. Yeah. Like I'm here for the the average person. I don't know. But you know, agri that's the thing, agri plates and media and microscopes and a flow hood, all that shit costs money. That's the other thing is like maybe the people that complain about the prices or whatever, it's like you you do realize like this shit costs money to do. Like this is not, I mean, I'm not growing. Oh, I tell like everybody it, if I, if I tell you to buy a Presto and you balk at a $150 pressure cooker, I say, yeah. it's not going to work out. You should just, it's not going to work out. 
But yeah. then I usually say, but come on, I know people. I know homeless guys that could scrounge up $150 today yeah. and buy a pressure cooker if they really wanted one. Oh, I know spend their money that on something spent like three times yeah. more than that. Yeah. So don't, I mean, don't tell me when you want it, you'll buy it. Yeah. You know, maybe you won't buy a Lamborghini when you want it because I want that, but I'm not buying it anytime soon. But you know what I mean? Like 150 bucks, anybody with a job, if they want a pressure cooker can get one. Yeah. Might not be be immediately, might have to save a couple paychecks for it, but it, it can be done. And if that's if prioritized. You can't, yeah, the people are like, ah, what about an Instapot? I have one of those. Dude, you're just that'd be like me going, I love downhill mountain biking. I'm gonna go to snowshoe or I'm gonna go to Whistler. But I mean I got this like mountain bike from nineteen ninety five, Trek eight thousand, you know hardtail i can go downhilling with that right no you can't you'll die you'll literally die you cannot do that <laughs> you'll like die or you just break your frame immediately <laughs> some things require certain equipment you don't hammer a nail with a cotton yeah exactly. you gotta buy a hammer this guy have the tools um yeah so you gotta have <clears throat> But that, that is with the, li the liquid culture. I think that's it making it a little bit. E so if you are maybe, if you do want to like just get it's into maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yes. You're providing make things a, a little bit easier for somebody. Yep. hundred percent. I think it's great. And then so, if it doesn't work, you can blame it on me. So There you go. <laughs> um, this so might be guys... the last time you ever have me on. It'll be uh, like, oh, Ed, the, the great debacle of 2024, Ed sent out. A fucking contaminated tote mono fuck. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. Now, it's not, not going to happen. I'm not even worried. But I am um, going to after. I'm going to go look at my fucking mono plates and be like. I'm sure <laughs> you will. Just, just to be sure. <laughs> I mean, just yeah, to be we'll, sure. Yeah, it's fine. It'll be fine. If not, oh, I'll just give people their money back or whatever. Fuck, it's not a big deal, you know. It's, it's not really, really a big deal. deal. I'm going to be dead soon. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> I mean, you're not that much older than me, Ed, but thanks. Yes, we will all be dead so sooner than than. Well, soon, we man, as you get older, these years tick away they real do. fast, oh, man. Oh, yeah, time just flies by, man. It's like, I swear to God, I was 19 last year. Yeah, people are talking about COVID like it was some ancient thing, and it was, yeah, it, it kind of yeah. is, but it's like, oh. Yep. Yeah, it's scary. A year goes so fast when you get past 30, 40, man. It's just like, wow, another yeah. year. Yeah. All right, so if you guys are interested, um, I, I'll put the link in the description for this. Um, but you just go to a Spore Swaps. He, he's got it listed there. Um, if you mm -hmm. guys want to play the the mono game, you can just start squirting that stuff in bags and see what happens. Gr grow some diamond crosses. Um, I'm imagining pretty shortly he'll have more than more than one thing available, and then you'll you can buy a couple and you can squirt those together yeah. you can i mean so like run the numbers ed was talking about this i think last week or somewhere we were talking about this if you get to where you can buy three or four of these i mean slow down because you got you got enough to do a lot well yeah so here's the idea to be honest i'm only going to release maybe one or two a month and the idea is i know they will get out in the community so if everybody like maybe by next month everybody will have that mono and then next month like here's another one and then maybe after about six months or a year there's going to be this whole collection of monos and then people right. can really that's when the numbers are going to get like astronomical yeah. yeah like if you've got like i think with 10 monos that's like 45 novel crosses and that doesn't even count the diamonds right. Right. And then once you like you were saying, you get that F1 and then you get spores from that and then you can back cross it to be one of the original monos or what your life's is, work right there. <laughs> yeah, your it's life's work. Gonna, yes. I'm hoping it will really blow up because if yes. those people I, and if there is a if there's a 20 year old, 18 year old guy, girl out there and they get a hold of a mono and all of a sudden start shooting this into their dicarions, they can get some weird shit man, real quick. Yep. Like you were saying with the numbers, these people that get the mutants, it's because they're running five or a thousand bags and one out of those thousand bags, they see a mutation. Yep. But, you know, the average person may be running five or ten tubs 
like you just don't see the numbers yeah so when you, when this stuff gets out there i'm really like quite excited like that's why i don't care to name things right it's like let other people do this because my brain's too small to figure out you're like while you're sitting there happen. naming a thing i'm just made five more things yep that's it i'm just gonna keep making these things I, the irony is you just said that, said the taxonomist. Uh, yeah, I know. You it's should a be little obsessed bit... with naming these things, Ed. This I is, Well, that's it. Irony. I realized it, it's like, you know, the Dunning-Kruger thing or the like, yeah. when yeah. you become very, very good at something, you realize how not good you are at it and a how other much. Things too, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't know how shit you are at something until you actually understand what you're doing. And then you're like, these taxonomy things and all this, it's not really that important. And there's so there's literally like unresolvable, like untenable things in taxonomy and naming that cannot be solved. Right. And it's just they can like be you gotta debated give up. endlessly throughout time though, Ed. Yeah, but you gotta give up at a point, you know? It's right. like it's like fighting against the haters or trying to dit like Nate. Yep. It's like you just got to give up after a while and yep. submit, exactly. move on. Like, no, you know, don't let that kind of thing like affect your life. And like, that's easier said than done, you know, True. but yeah. Like so add about special releases. This It makes me think back to when I went to McDonald's once a month as a yeah. poor child and just yes. hoping I could get the grimace glass. Exactly. The special edition Grimace glass. It only comes around once a year. Yes, I love it. That's great. That's what I'm trying to do because I'm not Dole real super out. good at business and marketing or even like rappers, you know, it's like, oh, this is going to be out like next week. Right. <laughs> like that kind of hype thing. And, you know, this also gives some time for people to process. And to be honest, for like I, I think I sent out four four syringes or maybe one, four, I think I sent out. I know, and I hope honestly, sincerely that those people share that because by next month, if the half the community has this shit, they'll be like, we need another mono. Right. And so they'll be like, oh, that last mono worked pretty well. Like let's buy Ed's new release. And go. I don't know, you know, I'm, up, well, I'm officially on clubs. Buying Ed's monos is what we got going on. I know it. It's going to be a long mono investment clubs. That's what people are going to do. The, no, yeah, I know there are discords that do that where they literally, like, they go, Hey, let's get the new such and such. Everybody chips in five bucks. Oh yeah. Buys it. Oh yeah. That shit happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I would do that too. I mean, shit, you know, I, I, that's exactly what I do. That's how you get if I, I'd be like, I'd be getting my friends, my four friends together and be like, we need 120 bucks. You each to get yep. two CCs. Yeah. And that, that's the great thing about this. And you know, you can obviously multiply it and expand it. Just make sure that first dude that opens the fucking LC doesn't fuck it up. Yeah. Make sure that's not the first LC they've ever worked with. Yes. You that's what I'm more terrified. I'm like somebody who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Going to be like, just like no alcohol, nothing. Just rip it open and be like, let me shoot this into a mason jar that I haven't sterilized or something. Right. Like that one video you saw, you sent me that there's a guy with the fan yeah, yeah, making LC and shit. Oh, he was like, God. can you resend that to me? I didn't watch it. I don't all know. The way I don't even remember where that came from. That I yeah, couldn't just get like through opening mason jars and like dumping LC into get, each other. I couldn't get through it. Yeah. <laughs> wing in a prayer, yeah. dude. That was a wing in a prayer. Hopefully it's not guy. that guy who gets yes. the first LC. <laughs> Hundred percent. All right. Well, so at guys, the end of the day, I still got all the original plates. You know, if something does fuck up yes. in shipping, you know, I mean, there's always things like the fucking postal system. Uh, like I sent one to Dichotomous. So, so I also, um, if you, yeah, speaking of that, Dichotomous. So here's my backup. So worst case scenario is like somebody's gonna get it. They're gonna say it's fucked up, contaminated, be like, oh, Ed's shit, because you know there's nefarious assholes out there that might want to do that kind of thing they might want to i don't know why they might not like me for some reason so dichotomous has both monos that are going to be released in that so dichotomous has a, an original mono the same shit i sent out so if anybody tries to do funny shit be like look ed's monos are fucked up well right. dichotomous has same batch yeah. so as long as he doesn't tell me they're fucked up whatever else anybody says i'm not too bothered with of course, I well, might get a message from him after the look. Thing. Realistically, like, oh, yeah. you're. 
I don't think you're going to, I think people are going to roughly know what they're doing that are buying them. I don't think I would most think so, people yeah. are going to go, I, I have no clue what I'm doing. Let's buy a mono carry on. I mean, if you don't yeah. know what a mono carry on, no one's buying one anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming. But again, you know, I get the, the names on some of these, you know, some people are doing some sort of sneaky stuff out there. They're not right. on Facebook. They're not on uh, fucking discords. You guys, there's some yeah, people out there. Right they want to stay in the background, you know, and, and they don't, they don't go on social media. Right. You know, there's like, not everybody that does this shit gets on here and shows their face, you know, and they don't want to, right. they don't, they just want to sit at home and fuck with their mushrooms. You know, yeah. some That's of us right. choose to put our faces on here. Some don't. Yeah. There's a lot of those people. True enough. Underground. True enough. Like we're not even the underground anymore. Remember when it was like cool to be like a, a like drug person? Right. Oh, <laughs> like, there are plenty of people that still think <laughs> that they're they live in some little fantasy like that. Yes. Those people. Oh yeah, the, the Scarface. The people that watch Scarface a couple too many times. Yeah. Yeah, they like the how the many high times rollies. have you watched Scarface, Dad? At least 20, 30, 40. I don't even can't remember. I yeah. stopped counting I'm after all it's called. <laughs> No, oh, that anyway. scar, that thing of like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be the big man special here at the, yeah. you know, after my first mono tub, I forgot my my empire is, is starting out. The same thing, I'm sure you get it with the YouTube people, yeah. like, oh yeah, they got like, I've got like six channels, and they've watched a few, uh, you know, a few uh, that other guy who's like, how to be a famous YouTuber and get sponsors and get free grow lights, and they're like watching a bit too much of that shit, and they're like, I want to be a famous YouTuber. But some people just want that, dude. It's so weird. Anyway, I can't get it. I got to go. Let, yeah, let, here okay, too, let's man. conclude. Let's conclude. Okay. You, you yeah, have mono. You got monos to check out. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, oh, yeah. if people are interested in trying out his mono, if you want to get a little Myco Investment Club going and, and buy one with a group, of, you know, twenty <laughs> of your closest Myco friends, um, you go to Sports Swaps. You go to his his little uh, page within there. Look it up. You'll find it. You can order it. Stay tuned. He'll have more. We can play all sorts of games. This this yeah. year's going to be amazing. We're going to play all sorts of fun games with Ed stuff. See what everybody gets. It's going to be a good time. Um, for all the people uh, who doing the going to do the mutant grow along, I'm going to post the information on how to get a get in contact with Mickey uh, as soon as this podcast uh, concludes here in a moment. And uh, if I magically fall asleep at my desk tonight, uh, it'll be up there in the morning. But we'll get it up there. Uh, you can reach out to him through Discord. He is in my Discord at Mutation Man. Just look up Mutation Man. You'll find him. If you're not in my Discord, get in it. Um, you're going to probably want to be in there for the grow along anyway. Otherwise, you're not really growing along. You're just growing by yourself. And we've all done that. So anyway, get hooked up with that if you want um, the Mutant Lucid Gates. Or mutant gates from Stefan Kai. I'm gonna have the his contact there as well. That one looked pretty cool. Um, anyway, let's grow some mutants. Let's do some haploid uh, diamond crosses. Let's have a good time this year, guys. Um, with that, we're gonna peace out here. Take care, guys. Yeah.